Hello everyone, welcome to a Conquest unit tier list. I am here with uh, someone's PC, and um, we, we've decided here that we're going to be doing a, a tier list for all the units in the game, including child units. Um, more so based on our experiences, but there's going to be a lot of uh, meta talk here probably, so um, yeah, that's going to be... That's gonna be fun. So, um, why don't you, uh, introduce yourself and, uh, give a little explanation on how these tiers are gonna work. Yeah, hi y'all, my name's Someone P- is, My name's Someone PC, <laughs> and I've been playing Fire Emblem for a very long time. I've been playing, like, well, maybe not a long time. I played Awakening and Three Houses and other games. I just really enjoy playing this game, and I'm gonna start making content soon. But as for the tiers themselves, so... The thing about fates is any unit can be good if you put enough investment into them, but there's some units that require lower investment, higher investment, and, but yeah, con fates in general gives you a lot of tools with tonics and stat stacking and abilities. So you can make every unit good, but some kind of fall off like during the game. But in terms of the tiers, game defining, so these units generally don't require too much investment. They're good throughout the game. Maybe they have like one, two flaws that are like, that aren't even like much of an issue. They can easily be patched up. Solid one or two flaws. So these are characters where they're also really good, but there's like one or two things that are just, um, they're kind of a big hole for them, but they're still very usable, still very good. They just need a little more support. Good throughout the game, but needs investment. So these are characters where they're good. They might fall off in some spot, some parts, especially when the game like kind of spikes in difficulty. They really need like some investment to kind of seal out the late game or be better in the early game, just stuff like that. So underwhelming. Oh yeah, also for this yellow tier, these can also go for like utility units as I can put it. Or utility. Because utility is also a very important thing. So mm -hmm. underwhelming. These are good characters, but only like specific chapters. Like throughout the game, they're not very great, but there's some chapters where they really, really, really shine and they're very helpful. Mm -hmm. And then bad, these are characters that are just like a lot of investment, take a lot of work, um, but they can be good backpacks, but not great combat or great utility. So, mm -hmm. all right, should we start off with Corrin? Um, yeah, so uh, I guess I, I, I want to give my opinion on this first. So yeah, go ahead. I think that Corin is in game defining, but it's probably not for the reason that most people think I would put it in game defining. Um, the reason why I think Corin is one of the best characters in this game is the fact that she or he is the only unit that gets multiple friendship seals, which means you are going to be able to get builds that would not otherwise be even possible on some other units, which I think is just on the borderlines of broken, because you can basically make a Corin that could apply to any of these tiers, and it would just make total sense. For sure. Also, like, thinking about it, Corin's early game is really solid. You get um, 14 Might Dragonstone that hits for resistance, Amazing dual strikes. Um, supportive is also really helpful. There's some characters like Silas early on to kind of get mm. through like chapter 10 and stuff. Um, and then later on, when the difficulty spikes, whatever talent you gave to Corrin can just help you through that late game. Like there's so many yeah. good builds. You can put her in Malignite, get like Trample and Savage Blow. You can go Samurai, Life and Death, Sword Fair, Vantage. Even some of like the weirder builds, like I've been experimenting with like Priestess, Shining Bow. Like, you get Rally mm. Luck, which is a pretty underrated ability. And just, basically, you can build Corrin however you want, and her talent just helps her through that late game when other units would kind of fall off, so... Yeah, and another great so thing good. about the talent is that it can get a unit into a class that they otherwise could not get into. Um, Absolutely. So, say I wanted to get, you know, uh, Silas into Troubadour, but I don't want him to marry Elise because she's marrying someone else. Um, I could just have... You know, Troubadour Corrin. <laughs> Don't ever put oh, yeah, Silas sure. in Troubadour, but, <laughs> you know, you could do it. I mean, you know, the meme builds, if you experiment with some of them, they might 
they might yield some results. Yeah. But yeah, Corrin just... Also, something to mention is Corrin's ability, nobility, allows her to kind of always, like, either catch up or be ahead of the curve, mm. which is very important in Conquest. When, like, yeah. chapter, like, 19, the game starts getting really hard. And even, like, 15, she can just, like, catch up. Say you didn't really train Corrin for, like, the first 13 or 14 chapters or so. You can just use nobility on chapter 15 to just catch up. And, yeah, it's so good. Yeah. Like, main characters will always be good in Fire Emblem. <laughs> and there's no exception. Yeah, and aside from uh, Corrin's children... Um... Corn is the only unit that gets access to the Nor Noble skills, which usually aren't amazing, but I think Draconic Hex is a lot better than some people think it is, since it's basically just a walking in feeble, which can be really insane for like setting up boss kills or just like milking experience for weaker units. Um, you can do a lot with it, and um, I think that should uh, it's worth noting. Yeah, it's good you mentioned that, because I think another thing is, what's a unit's ability to kind of feed kills to other units? Like, we'll talk with Camilla later about that. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, that's definitely an important thing to mention, is, like, Draconic Hex in a setting where you're trying to maximize experience is very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Corn's really good. Um, no surprise there. <laughs> Um, next up is Azura. I want to kind of talk about this one. Mm -hmm. Azura's really broken, and that's for two reasons. Dancers have always been good throughout Fire Emblem, but in this game you have Shelter. And Shelter is just, oh my god. Shelter yeah. singing literally makes so many maps easier. And on top of that, she gets Inspiring Song, which Inspiring Song with like fancy footwork, a good pair up and a tonic makes speed not really an issue for like most units in this game. And Shelter singing, and even like her ability with Healing Descent, if you're playing really fast, that extra healing can kind of help sometimes. Yeah, and uh, I've, I've actually had a lot of moments where I've been like milking experience out of a boss or something, and then I've, uh, or like trying to get like a really tough kill, like uh, say Garen in chapter 12 of Birthright, right? You can't really do a lot of damage to him, so eventually you're gonna run out of staves, but you know, you can still heal with Azura, so you'll. You'll never run out of healing, basically. It's, a, it's an infinite staff if you're willing to have the patience. Yeah, for sure. It really helps if you're, like, a newer player who's turtling through the maps and you're, like, like, Chapter 9, <laughs> I don't... Oh, like chapter, chapter 9, nine is... that much. But you can literally turtle through that map and use Azura and wait for, like, a few mm -hmm. turns. Hit Hitaka, like, wait. It, it's really... It's great. It's an infinite heal, basically. Yeah, and it's very good for, like, forgetful players, too, if you just never remember to buy staves, which um, I might be guilty of. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, I think healing in general is kind of weird because like the better you get at Fire Emblem, the more you can kind of control what damage you take. But yeah, there are times like in the game where healing is really, really nice. Yeah. Um, All right. So Jacob, is that it on Azura? Yeah, yeah. That's Just really bad. All right, so Felicia and Jacob, I don't know. They're either game-defining or solid one or two flaws. Um, like they're good? I think they're just solid because the thing is, they're insane in the early game. Um, and you can you can make them even more insane by, like, marrying Corrin, right? You can get them into, like, say, Wyvern Lord, and they'll just completely pop off or like magic malignite Paladin. with uh <laughs> or paladin um but by by like i, I want to say like chapter 12 ish or maybe 14 um they start to fall off and units such as like camilla uh leo xander they they all just like completely soar way past uh, anything that Jacob and Felicia could do um, without proper investment. I still think, though, that they have some... Tonebreaker is really important for certain chapters, mm -hmm. like especially 18, where there's like that right side with the mages. Just being able to kind of get through that is really helpful, as well as like some of the later chapters. I don't know. Tonebreaker is like really valuable. It makes some levels really easy, like much yeah. easier to deal with them. But yeah, they, they're kind of made of paper. Um, maids 
they're good early on. Like John Tiam and Demozel are really helpful for tanks like Effie and Odin who want to just like survive the early game. But like later on, it, Conquest kind of turns into a more enemy phase game where you're like using pair ups and guard gauge and stuff. And I don't know, they don't really keep up and Mage just not a great class later on. Like you do want to reclass them for sure. Yeah, what but I mean what makes I, them I like good that is, like um... replicate strat you did with Felicia with the Demozel oh, inspiration. Yeah. That was really fun. Yeah. Like what really makes these units good is the fact that they're in a promoted class and they can very, very quickly get like level five promoted skills, level fifteen promoted skills. They get them so much faster than other units that they can skill stack almost like no other. It's crazy how many skills you can just get on this one unit. Um, yeah. With very little Dagger effort. and healing is also a great utility early on. So I guess that's worth mentioning. But you're right, they do kind of fall off like later on. But you need to reclass them for sure. Yeah. Then in that case, we would move them here, but... Uh, they're still you can well i don't know you can make like because there, there's also like the uh you, you can make them like a really good rally bot too right oh really yeah because you have um you have rally resistance and you can get that really quickly with the second servant and then you can get the second servant a marriage that gives them a rally and if you're using felicia you have natural access to rally skill, which is three rallies already, and then you can fill the second two slots with like Demoiselle and Inspiration, and uh, then she becomes like a really great support unit. Um, so I think Utility might be actually a better spot for at least yeah, Felicia. I agree. I think. I mean, Demoiselle is a little bit better than John TM early on, but I guess you had Jacob. Like he, Jacob just has better stats. Yeah, for sure. Jacob is just. A stronger combat unit like like say for for 18 for example like i would i would absolutely rather you know dodge tank the the mage side of chapter 18 with jacob than felicia because uh jacob just does it so much better um felicia yeah, however sure. is the best flame shuriken user other than like oh yeah Bacorin. like once you get to chapter 11 i mean chapter 12 you get flame shuriken and she starts like doubling and killing stuff. It, it's really it's crazy how how good her magic is. Um, her accuracy is, eh, but accuracy is kind of fixable though with like heart seeker and stuff. That's but, true. Yeah, for sure. I think that's basically it. We might arrange them later once we look at everything, but for mm -hmm. now, the I I agree with this. All right, next up we got Kaze. I'll, I'll let you talk about him. I want to put him in game defining, but I know I'd be lying to myself. So, I think Kaze is one of the best units to use in Conquest. And that's because when I look at a unit, I want to look at how easily can I make them dominate the later half of the stages. And Kaze is one of the few units that are able to do that without any investment other than leveling up. Um, starting in chapter 18, he can just completely destroy the mages, uh, that entire room he can just solo. Um, he can kill chapter 19 pretty easily, he has natural access to vantage, he has... Uh, um, he has the, the Hunter's Knife, which is one of the best weapons in the game, really. Uh, chapter 20, he can do the same, like, he can kill all the Falcon Knights with Hunter's Knife. He can just destroy all the Omiyojis. Um, chapter 21 you skip, but then in chapter 22, there's an entire side that's just filled with, once again, like, Falcon Knights, Omiyojis, which he can just destroy. Uh, even in all the way up to chapter 26, he can solo the entire mage side. He can just dodge tank all of them. He he's hitting like 80% dodge rates on on the mages there. Um and since he gets to being able to do that with so little effort, I I think that I want to put him in solid because he can just 
destroy he, he can shut down so many parts of maps um his only flaw is that he can't really fight bulky units or like physical units yeah another thing to mention is lock touch is a very important ability in conquest it is so like you need the chest money is so oh, yeah. tight throughout the whole game that having that extra utility with lock touch is so helpful he can also set up kills with um, poison strike and daggers for other units, which is really nice. And he's just really fast. And I definitely agree with what you said, where Master Ninja with a Hunter's Knife is so important, like chapter 18, 19 onward. It is, oh my God, it's so valuable to get through those chapters. Mm -hmm. it, without it, it, it just makes like dealing with those tougher chapters like way more annoying. Oh my God. Yeah, I like I, I really don't know what I would do without like having a Master Ninja. Obviously, there are better na Master Ninjas, but Kaze is yeah. the only one that can do it without investment, and I think that makes him one of the better characters. Yeah, I definitely agree. It's just like really bulky units that any and ninjas are made of paper, so mm -hmm. you, you have to like really watch out for that. But at the same time, like Ninja Master Ninja gives good like para benefits, like plus one movement and speed is just like so good. But yeah, he's not perfect. But the lock touch utility, he doesn't require much investment. He's a good unit for sure. Mm. All right, up next is Silas. I think Silas is game defining. So really? early on, he reminds me of Balthus from Three Houses, where his early game's unparalleled because of his personal. Mm. It he just he's as bulky as Effie, but on a mounted unit and is somewhat fast. If you pair him with Corin, like him and Corin dual strikes just murder stuff early on. And then, like, later on in the game, if he has friendship with Kaze, you can put him in Master Ninja with Soul. And we already talked about how good Master Ninja with the Hunter's Knife is for, like, the latter stages of Conquest. Like, I don't know. Like, he's just, he's really good. He has access to good classes. And I don't know, being in Cavalier also gives you shelter support and elbow room. Like, I don't know, he has great stats. What do you think? Um... I honestly am in the in the camp of I think people overvalue Silas a little bit. There's there's no doubt that his early game is insane. Um, I think he he might even just be straight up the best early game unit other than like Dragonstone Corin. Um, yeah. And maybe Camilla if you depending on when you oh cut yeah off, we'll uh, get to Camilla. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, I I think usually. The, the the problem with Silas is that his growths are like 50-50 on kind of a lot or like close to 50 on a lot of his growths. So he's really like prone to getting stat screwed. Um which I've had happen to me quite a bit. Almost every time I've tried to use him seriously, he's been like stat screwed in at least one major stat like strength or speed. Um so it's a little tough to get him to catch up in in those aspects. But if that doesn't happen, I think he is really good. Um, I would be willing to put him in solid uh, for that reason. Also, he, he starts in a pretty unfortunate class, but you can get him out of that pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I can see it. Maybe I'm just carried by stats sometimes. Yeah. Like some characters have I mean, like really good growth. It, it definitely yeah. helps him that he has a vow of friendship because that it boosts his uh, effectively boosts his strength by three, so if you get uh, strength um, screwed, which is like one of the more susceptible, uh, susceptible, eh, susceptible that word, um, he, yeah, if he gets strength screwed, he can get fixed by Valor Friendship, same with defense, and I think that is very good. However, it does require Corrin to be under half health, and if you are not doing a vantage Corin, things can get a little scary to try and set that up. At least That's in the later. true. And also like later on, Corin at half health is not what you really want. It's it makes it it's harder and harder to kind of set that up and keep it there mm. with Corin. So especially yeah, if um, especially if Corin's in like a bulkier class or has like a lot of defense. Um or if you yeah. God forbid a defense boon. Uh but yeah. Yeah, I, th yeah. I think Solid is good. I think Solid, yeah, we can agree with that. All right, Shura, um, <laughs> the boots. 
Uh, I never uh, use them. I, I I never use. Oh, you never use sure. Or you never kill him. I I never use him. I always, almost always kill him. I've used him in one playthrough ever, and to be fair, he is a pretty good adventurer, and he has good access to class. I think he gets Soul Ninja, right? Uh, yeah, he gets Ninja for the Heart Soul class. Yeah, he gets he gets Ninja, and I think he has a Fighter Tree as well, so he, he does get Soul Ninja. But his problem, yeah, I believe, I is played his with him a lot. So growths aren't really that great. His growths? Yeah, I, I'm. I haven't had great growths on um on Shura. I mean, he has great stat um, stats at base. But eventually, other units will just like surpass him, and I, I feel like at a point, it's like it's like better to keep him an adventure, and even then, I feel like Niles does a better job at that. Yeah. So I think Shura. Um, so like you said, he's in a pretty decent class. Um, decent utility with movement plus one, staves, um, bows. He actually comes at the perfect time where you're about to go into chapter seventeen where bows are really helpful in the ninja cave. Like, very helpful. Hmm. He's somewhat fat. He's also, I don't know, he's kind of low investment, because, like, how I see it is bows later on in Conquest kind of take on a more... I don't know, they're really helpful, because you start seeing more flyers. Hunter's bow is, like, cracked in Chapter 19, and Lucky 7 is also really... It's basically, like, a hit plus 20 hmm. for, like, the first seven turns, where if you're playing fast, it's really good. But, I don't know, I don't see him being like... He could go into Bow Knight and get like Shuriken Breaker for chapter 25. But, it could, I don't know, but... you're kind of right where Niles just kind of does what he does better. And he came earlier, so he has more experience. Yeah, and, he, and um, a plus for Niles is that he can support with units. <laughs> so <laughs> Niles' personal just like changes the game. Oh yeah, also Niles has a... Y y we'll, we'll get to Niles. We'll but, get to uh, not Niles is another like ridiculous unit, but sure. Um, yeah, like, I, I think he's pretty good. I like, think he's usable throughout the game. He can go into Master Ninja, but like I feel like since he comes at a kind of awkward point, there's some units you have that are better as bow units. Yeah, I, I think I, I would personally put him in underwhelming, but good on specific chapters because he's really good in Chapter 17. He's solid in chapter 18. Um, 19, if you have a hunter's bow. Actually, I really like bow users in 19 because of like certain blow and lucky seven. Okay. So yeah. he, if you have a hunter's bow, he's really good. But like, I, then you'd have to reclass him into ninja. But I think he's pretty good on like certain chapters. Yeah, he's, he's solid for like the first couple chapters that you have him on. But um, without proper investment, you are probably not gonna have him as your you know best unit also the killer bow is kind of um insane it's like one of the only mm. like weapons that i use where i constantly just like get crits yeah <laughs> it's like the only weapon i can think of where i get crits well he's still usable like on chapter 20 and 24 you're gonna be facing a lot more flyers so he could be good there but wait, he doesn't have any weapon ranks in shurikens, which does hurt him. So that means you'd have to like spend a chapter just to get him to get the hunter's knife, where you already have Kaze and maybe Silas at that point. Yeah, true. But you do get um, I mean, you do get him before after eighteen, so you can probably get away with uh, having him kill the ninjas or not the ninjas. What am I saying? The the mages. Yeah, the mages and like the heroes on that map are really good to yeah. mainly the heroes. The heroes are really easy to grind against if you have like rally defense. Yeah. But yeah, this or this? No, but he's not here throughout the game. Yeah, so this is fun. Yeah, I, I, I think it's always better to kill him. Yeah, it's more optimal to get the boots because putting the boots on someone like Corrin with certain builds or like Camilla is just kind of insane. All right, so we got Azana. So. Azana, I kind of see, he has two rallies that are really hard to get in Conquest. You have Rally Magic and Rally Luck, and those are really helpful for, like, sweeping with mages later on. Mm -hmm. And he has Staff Utility, but he just comes so late, bro, like, oh my he, god. He joins a chapter 23, 
uh, which is not ideal, <laughs> to say the least. Because he's, he's very useful for the short time that he's there. Um, yeah. In fact, even I, I would even put him in game design, uh, defining if it weren't for the fact that he was just not there for basically the whole game. Exactly. Um, so, I think... Um, I put him in utility. I, like, I would put him in utility, yeah. I put him here, because like, the rallies he gets are really hard to get in Conquest. Mm. Like, nobody's going into Omioji. Nobody's going into like that stat line unless you're like Corn or something. Yeah. And they're really good rallies, like Rally Magic for late game sorcerers and like leo and odin is just very very good yeah but yeah, he's just not there for long enough but the staff he, but when he is there he is helpful yeah i um, i'm he, he's here to help other mages basically basically uh and he's a good staff bot like him because i think he joins with a really good like rank like I think it's C. I don't know, C? but it's still like pretty helpful. And status staves are really helpful later on, like in trap on certain levels is just makes he, your he's life. A, he's so a really easier. good silence user on like endgame or chapter twenty six too. But yeah, and rescue, like rescue and endgame is just if yeah. you want to do that strat, it's it's pretty helpful. So yeah. When he's there, he's there, but when he's not, you're missing mm. like two thirds of the game. Yeah, he he's definitely a lot better in, in birthright where you get him a lot sooner. And then he just like dies in Revelations. Like, what? <laughs> like chapter okay. ten, he dies. Um, Mozu. Okay, Mozu. I think is good because her ability makes it to where you can instant promote her, and she can get basically kind of. It's kind of similar to Korn's, um royalty, a nobility ability where you can promote Mozu like instantly and still touch up because of. Um, aptitude and she has some good she has access to archer and quick draw certain blow and bow fair is insane like it's so helpful yeah she she gets access to a really hard to get class she's the only one other than her kid that gets villager uh which means she's one of two units that actually get aptitude really helps uh really helps her growth clearly and I, I think that makes her one of the better units. The, her biggest issue is that she really can't enemy phase at all. No, her HP is so... She's so frail. Yeah, she she has good defense is the thing. Like, she has, like, pretty solid defense, but her HP is just so low it's that... so low. Because I was, like, playing Chapter 21 as a Kenshi Knight with her, and I was like, mm. wait, where'd her HP go? Like, why is she so frail? <laughs> yeah, she, like, really can't take many hits. She can take, like, one, maybe two, depending on her defense stat, but, um... Usually, she's receiving... Like, if I'm using her, I'm letting her go to 2020, I'm giving her a Seraph robe, and <laughs> I, I'm just like doing everything really in my power it. to help her defense so I can like, you know, have her do some work on enemy phase. Yeah, also to mention like the Paralog characters, their Paralog matters a lot where Mozu's is really easy. It's a good grind map mm -hmm. and she's a good unit. And she also gives the Brass Naginata, which plus one defense on certain units early on, like Effie and Silas is pretty helpful. And yeah, like, her paralog is really easy, which uh, is would... nice to have. Like, some of these child units, their paralogs are, like, god-awful hard. Like, Seed Bird over here. Yeah. And, yeah, I, it's good she has an easy paralog. I would say she's... Because, like, she gets Archer, which is very helpful in Chapter 10. And then bow units start to become really good starting Chapter 11. Because, like, Chapter 12... Mm -hmm. Wait. Yeah, Chapter 12, you face a lot of ninjas. Chapter 13, you face, like, the annoying flying river thing. And then Chapter 14, you get the ambush spawns with, like, Kenshi Knights and stuff. And that's when bow users are just very, very helpful. And then Sniper just becomes helpful. And then you can reclass her into Kenshi Knight, which is an amazing player phase um, class Yeah, and for the late game. I, I, think, I think one of the greatest things about Mozu here is that she can give Archer 
to other units too, which they, uh, they otherwise would not be able to have it. So they can, she can give it to like Effie, she can give it to Nyx, um, and they're, they're arguably some of those units like best classes because it's just such a powerful, uh, powerful class line to be in. Um, yeah, I would say solid one or two flaws. Like she's good throughout the game. Like Archer is no joke and Kenshi Knight's great late game, but she's so frail. Like she literally do not enemy phase with her. It's too, she can't take like three hits. It's really yeah. bad. It's a, uh, it's rough, especially if you never reclass her. She gets, uh, well, actually I think her defense is better in, uh, in merchant, but. So. Oh, yeah, that's true. You can put her in merchant and like get money, I guess. Her luck isn't but... that great. <laughs> <laughs> I like saw someone doing that. They're like, yeah, I keep getting all this. I think I saw Zoran do that where he put her in merchant and got a bunch of money with her. And I was like, okay, I guess that's a way. You can, yeah, you can she... definitely get a lot of money out of her. It's just an unreliable source of money. Does she require investment though? Not too much. And the fact she like gives Archer to other units is really all she needs is a heart seal, like one heart seal, and then you promote her into Kenshi Knight, and she will do okay. And then you can like reclass her later back to get like bow fair. Yeah. And quick draw is also quick draw just like makes I think unit good. With with minimal investment, she's all right. With a lot of investment, she's insane. <laughs> yeah, for sure. She also gets. She's just so good on like chapter 24 just flying around there chapter 24 she just like kills everything with the bow it's so awesome yeah and natural access to uh air superiority is really nice in 24. um do we want to say so fuga's not in this game um fuga's gone and uh, do we want to talk about the child units later because i feel like um yeah i would say we wait on the child units yeah we can wait on that all right gunter gunter I don't know. He has bad growths, but good weapon range. He's a really good backpack. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't use Gunter that much. I just know he has good weapon ranks and bad growths. So, so I never use him. Uh, I think that he is, at best, a very good utility unit. Um, and at worst, a Corrin backpack. Because he gets natural access to... Rally defense and rally skill. He gets uh, natural flying access, and then he can just fly around, be a, be a flying shelter bot, and just generally help the entire team out, uh, even even without being paired up to Orin for the personal bonus. Um, but if you don't decide to do that, then first of all, a great knight pair up is pretty good, especially for like a, a weaker Corin, and then. The extra stats that are added on top of that, thanks to Gunter's personal skill, make Corrin into a good unit to an insane unit. Oh yeah, I have seen people do that. They like paired Gunter up with uh, Corrin. Mm. So that makes sense. And he comes at a point in the game which is like halfway through Conquest, and the game's starting to get much more difficult. Yeah. So it does kind of give Corrin that power boost a little bit. Yeah. And shelter utility will always be good. Even if you're a bad unit, shelter is a very good ability to have. Yeah, you could have zero stats across the board, but you'd still be useful if you had shelter or rallies. I would put him, I can see him in utility. Like yeah. the extra plus, the plus 15 hit is really nice. Uh, shelter is nice. Natural flying is very good. And like second half of conquest, yeah. like chapter 15. Na 16. Natural flying, natural rallies, natural, natural shelter, and also, um, if you decide to keep Corin in Nor Noble, or at least like dip back into Nor Noble for the level fifteen skill, um, you can make Corin a soul user without ever getting soul on Corin, which oh, is that's, which is pretty. That's kind of cracked. That's insane. Um, that is. I don't know why you'd want to invest that time into Gunter that much, but... <laughs> hey, it's there if you want it. If you want to do it. <laughs> All right. Elise? Okay. Elise is a very fun character to use. So there's two ways you can play her. You can either go low investment, where she 
supports with Demoiselle inspiration and Troubadour and be like a staff bot. Or the better way is put her into, you put her into Wyvern Rider early. And then later on around chapter 14, she gets C rank and axes, promote her to Malignite, kills everything with a um, bolt axe. And then she's also really helpful uh, later on, on chapters like 21, because she can just kind of like murder everything with lightning. And then being a natural, being in a flying class is really great later on as well. Like Malignite's a great class. She gets Trample, she gets um, Savage Blow. She's in like probably one of the best classes in Conquest, like by far, and her magic's insane. Her personal mm. is also really nice early on. Like it really helps characters like Odin and Effie and Silas just tank and Corn as well. So I don't know, she's just, if you put her through the Wyvern Rider Malignite, she becomes a very like solid unit. The main flaw is her skill's terrible. Like she can just, she's gonna hit really hard, but will she hit them is the question. Um, yeah, I think, okay, I I'll start off with the the first, uh, first route that Elise will go which is the, the more support-based thing. Um, I think Elise is a really good support unit. I think she's at least better than Felicia because um, she gets the Troubadour access, just like Felicia. She gets, you know, um, Rally Resistance, Inspiration, Demoiselle. And then she also has her personal skill, which is another defensive aura. And then she also has natural access to Rally Defense, which pretty much makes... At least uh, able to turn any unit into like a defensive beast, really. At least any male unit into a def defensive beast. Because you can just like stack a lot of bulk on a unit with Elise alone. And I think, uh, I think that's really, really valuable if you want to invest the time into her. That said, um, I think if you go the Malignite route with her, I think she's like the magical version of a Mozu. Yeah. She has she's quite real. really <laughs> good growths. She will destroy everything on player phase. However, she really cannot enemy phase that well. Um, she has decent defense, but her HP growth isn't that great. And sometimes her defense isn't even that great either. And then obviously she'll have some struggles with hit hitting things, so you um, are going to need to account for that. Um, especially if you're playing like an Iron Man or something, um, and she can get a little shaky. But uh, otherwise, yeah, I think I think she can go both ways really easily, and she doesn't even take that much effort. Um, especially if you're willing to use like arm scrolls if you go the Malignite route. So. Yeah, I, I would put her above Mozu. I feel, I feel like she's there. Like, she can she can be good in, like, two different ways. But there's the obvious flaw where she's kind of frail. She she might not hit the enemy until, like, later on once you... Because you, you can marry her to Odin and give her access to um, Dark Mage and get Heartseeker and Malefic Aura, which are helpful. But that's, like, much later down the line, and you need to do, like, some paralogs and Invasion 2 and stuff to try to get her there. Yeah, she she does definitely do need like she does definitely need some effort, um, especially if you want to get like a bunch of like skill stacks with um, like Malefic Aura and Heartseeker and stuff. But um, you know if you if you get there, she is an insane unit. Yeah, it's just like or later early on, it's like oh my god, I hate playing chapters like eight and 9 and 10 sometimes with her because it's like 75 hit oh my god and like chapter 11 as well the hit rates are so shaky and you feel like you have to give her like a skill tonic or something to try to hit around 80 percent but later on in the game it gets better because she gets good backpacks and she really is she's also a good backpack herself like to characters like odin and other magical units if they have like an a support with her or s support then she can easily just like be a decent backpack to giving a lot of magic yeah and even if you never reclass her troubadour gives a uh, movement which is really nice 
movement's always great. Like movement is so, so good in this game. It reminds me of like three houses where the maps are just so big, where if you have a lot of movement, you're probably a good unit. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we might reorder this later, but I think I think Elise is solid. Um, it's just like shaky accuracy sometimes. Yeah, I I, I would actually put her a, like above Mozu, honestly. Up Mozu? Yeah, that's true, because you do get her earlier, and Lily's poise is pretty helpful early on. All right. Arthur, I think Arthur's bad. Um, and for some really weird reasons as well. So Arthur, he comes very early. He comes like right at the start of Conquest on like turn two or three. I think, I think it's turn three of chapter seven. And he's already, he can't hit anything accurately. He has bad luck, which is like a part of his character. And he is probably the worst, one of the worst personals in the game. And I don't know, another thing like people don't really talk about with Arthur with having bad luck is he's more likely to get crit. So if you, even though it's like not super high, like five, 10%, like 3%, if you're fighting like 10 enemies on a map, one of them might crit and you're forced to reset, which is a problem only he really has. Yeah. And it's really annoying, so. I think the only way that you can really use Arthur effectively is if you give him, uh, if you give him the goddess icons, at least the the early game one that you get uh, pre chapter six, because otherwise he's just he's just gonna get crit by everything. You're never gonna want to enemy phase with him because he's just he's just too much of a liability. And, oh yeah, um, sure. he's also not super fast, so he can get double like really easily. Yeah, uh, he's not very fast. He does have an amazing strength growth, an amazing HP growth, and an amazing skill growth. So, you know, eventually if you train him up enough, he will be able to hit everything. He'll probably hit very hard. But, but he might not hit them. <laughs> He's like the Elise problem. It's it's like I don't know, I don't know. I think his biggest flaw is definitely just his his luck. Like he he basically requires a stat booster to yeah. to work and also, he gets Gamble, and I was playing Chapter 10 one time, and I forgot to, like, level him up. And I was like, oh, shoot, I got Gamble mid-Chapter 10. This is so bad. Yeah, that's that's definitely, uh, <laughs> that's definitely so a very bad. real risk that happens. Yeah, you forget to, like, level him up to get Gamble, because Gamble's probably one of the worst skills in the game. You will always take hit over crits any day mm -hmm. in Fire Emblem. He is an insane backpack because he's a natural berserker. Oh yeah, for sure. At S rank, that gives eight strength, which is insane. Yeah, he's a great backpack for like Effie and Camilla later on. Like he's yeah. so good and er I guess he is usable at least in like the first like 10 chapters. But then once chapter 11 hits and later on, he just struggles to keep up and I just decide not to use him anymore. Yeah, I think I think the best way to use Arthur is to reclass him through marriage. Um, his heart seal is not helping him at all. It's uh, Cavalier, which is just what oh, are you no. what are you even doing with that? Okay, well to be fair, you can damage stack, you can get him shelter, you can get him uh, you know, like defender elbow room, but I don't know. There are like some meme crit builds you can do with him. He's oh. probably the best candidate for crit builds in Fates. There are I've crit heard. builds. He is... He does have a lot of skill, so I guess it, it would work, but the issue with crit builds is that either if you don't crit when you need to, or if you do crit when you really can't afford to, it, it, it's very easy to get punished for that. I, th I think Fates, in particular, is the game that punishes you the most for getting critical hits. So it's a lot- That's very true, because of guard gauge and like maximizing experience. So yeah, crits aren't even like, even if it was like three houses where you could stack a bunch of crits with like crit ring, battalion, all this other stuff, crits just aren't that good in this game because you want to like time certain um, guard gauges and then maximize experience. So yeah, I definitely can see that. Mm. So crits just and fates are not that great. 
So, oh well, poor Arthur. But he makes a great backpack later on. He is a great backpack. Um, but yeah, he's kind of like the standard um, Fire Emblem fighter you get early, but struggles to hit stuff and kind of struggles to keep up. But at least in this game, he can provide like stat bonuses. All right, next up is Effie. Um, I like Effie a lot. She is one of the best um, armored units in the series because she's an armored unit with good speed growth. And early on, and her personal is really good. Like plus four, if plus four damage, if you're like five strength higher than the opponent, super good early on. And either you can like kind of just go through general and put her into armored knight which I've seen some people do for not super high investment and she's solid. Or you can have her friends with Mozu and get her into Archer by chapter 13. And she can be an Archer and an insane Kenshi Knight later on with like Bowfair, Poisson's Quick Draw. Just a really good unit. But she does require a bit of investment. Yeah, you can even get her into Archer a little bit earlier if you decide to wait on chapter... Uh, or wait on Paralog. No, yeah, do Paralog 1 early rather um but it's recommended oh, yeah, that you do true. like I, I think i think you don't have the even enough deployment slots after chapter eight so it's probably just better if you wait um i think effie is all right i think i think effie is insane in the early game um she's usually my mvp for chapters like 10 through 13 um and then she stays solid for throughout the entire game i'm a big fan she's a really good mother um for like percy siegbert uh i'm, I'm a big fan of uh effie siegbert um she is able to give <sighs> really good pair up um she's able to get really good pair up from her like more desired partners and she just overall like stays solid throughout the game. Yeah. And I think But I think once the game starts to get harder, you need to like reclass her, maybe. And she requires a little bit of investment. But she has good backpacks though. Like Arthur's good. Keaton's also a good backpack. Because she's a female, you have access to good backpacks to like really help your late game for sure. But she does require a little bit of investment, but she's a good character. Yeah, the game. I, I I think I think her best route is going into sniper, um, and then once she gets certain blow, you put her into Kenshi Knight, and then Kenshi Knight Effie destroys everything because Kenshi Knight has good speed, which fixes her problem that she has in Knight, which is just like she's not in a very fast class, but she has a yeah. Even though she growth. has like good speed growth, she's not going to be super fast. Yeah, so. After, after I would say, you can probably get away with keeping her in night up to like chapter fifteen. Well, I guess technically sixteen, but then you really want to start thinking about reclassing her. Well, because um, I was gonna talk about this with um, what's his name? Where is he? With like Benny, where on chapters like nineteen. 20 and 21 like having a good defensive wall is very helpful and even like 22 on sakura it's it's all right yeah that's true but i don't think but she can but she has better she has better things to do she has than... a lot better things to do because her defense i believe isn't better than benny's uh for no comparison. benny's defense is better. so it's... if you're defense stacking you definitely would rather want to do it with someone else her thing is strength because she has yeah. puissance, she can one round things if she's fast enough, and she could probably even one shot things, uh, especially in the early game. She can one shot things with like a dual strike, so it's like she she just all, all she wants is to get out of night. <laughs> that's that's really it. Um, but once you yeah, get basically. once you get out of night, I think she's really good. I think she might even be better than Mozu. I don't know. That's a hot take. It's but kind of a hot take. But that is kind of a hot take because, like, Mozu's aptitude, I think, is kind of one of her biggest her biggest virtue. 
But yeah. I don't know. I can see it though, because like she is a stronger Kenshi Knight for sure. Better defense. Um, Puissance, just because Kenshi Knight doesn't have the best strength. Puissance kind of fixes that in quick draw. Certain blow is very helpful. Oh man, that's. I don't know. I can see it, but. I don't know. I can. What would. I'll, I'm gonna leave this one up to you. Where would you put it? I, I I would put her above Mozu, personally. Yeah. Main flaws. Um, what are her flaws? I guess like she's not in a great starting class and it does. Fall she off. needs support to get out of her class situation because her heart seal class is Troubadour, so that's not helping her. Uh, at uh, all. Unless you want to go Maid Effie, which is I don't think is terrible. Maid Effie. It's. <laughs> Um, yeah, she, she really, she really desperately needs a friend or a husband. And, yeah, she uh, needs some investment to, like, carry her through that late game. Yeah. And, like, being in a bow class is so good, like I said, in chapter, like, 13, 14, and some of the later chapters. It's... All right, we've talked enough about Effie. Yeah. Effie's, <laughs> Effie's a good unit. All right, Odin. Odin's kind of a big one, where I, I know this character a lot. Odin's so fun to use. And he's good. I would put him here. I would put him here. I think he's good throughout the whole game, but he needs investment. He really does. Like early on, he's a great Nosferatu tank. He has good HP, defense, and skill and magic. So put him next to like um, Elise, and he literally will clear sections of the map for you. So yeah. Nosferatu tanking is like no joke early on. But then again, I feel like he needs like an HP tonic, maybe a defense tonic. To, like really get there maybe some support with like roads of thorns to get there and then halfway through the game nosferatu tank it's still strong but there's obviously some chapters like chapter 17 the ninja cave where it's like not viable and like chapter 19 it's like really iffy to hit hit rates on that chapter and i feel like you need an insane amount of like spirit dust or something on that level to get it but it's still solid but what is but what he's better at is he has access to the samurai line so he can get advantage and life and death to kind of just go through the rest of the game and what's even better is he can get the calamity gate so any of his bad matchups with with I almost called it wrath vantage life and death vantage just like he can blow through them. It's just so good to have a great enemy phase unit later on in Conquest, but he needs support. He needs like an Elise pair up. He needs maybe a Rally Magic. He needs some tonics here and there and some Spirit Dust, but he can definitely pull his own weight throughout the game with some support. That's what I see. Um, yeah, I think that Odin is one of the better early game units. So in the early game, um, Starting at, like, really chapter 9, he can just Nas tank everything. Um, chapter 9, he can just, re like, Nas tank the archers really well. In chapter you 10... like, the Oni Savage room. Yeah. Oh, you meant chapter 9 or 10? No, I, I'm, I'm, like, going through them. So... Oh, okay. In, in chapter 10, he just completely eats the entire left side of that map. With like no investment, we give him like Nyx pair up, and he just goes crazy <laughs> over there. Um, and then after that, he can eat the entire right side of Chapter Eleven, and the left side too. Like, Re it, yeah, he really, can yeah. Both of those rooms. He really just not can. the ninja one. The ninja room, <laughs> he struggles. Um, and then it continues on. Not not so much chapter twelve because there's like ninjas and like sword masters which are a little hard, but in chapter thirteen he can once again get on his Nas tank grind and just in chapter 12, kill everything. And even in chapter twelve, you know, like the part where the archers spawn, he can just kind of deal with that one of those sides for you, and it's really helpful. Yeah, and then and then like after, I, I would say chapter fourteen is his last yeah. great chapter as just like a normal you know just staying in the sorcerer line just using tomes and stuff after that you're probably going to want to start thinking about reclassing him into either samurai or like at least giving him dark knight promotion to get him swords um if you're feeling a little crazy a partner seal but um 
yeah, I, I think I think his his Nas tank utility is like one of the more valuable things in the early game, and then after that he is going to require effort. Yeah, for sure. Cause like once um, chapter sixteen is the one where you're on the ship, right? And yeah. they're stealing the gold. Yeah. That's the one where that's the part of the game where the game starts to have promoted units and Nas tanking starts to become a little bit difficult. Like you need to start giving him spirit dust and stuff like that. Good pair. He needs to have like a good backpack on him to even like survive that level. Like I tried it because I was like, let me try using Odin the whole game. And that was like one of the chapters where I noticed like Nas tanking doesn't isn't as good. Like the enemies are starting to get really strong. And then that's when you if you haven't already like gotten vantage and use his daughter at that point then that's the chapter where he need you need to start like thinking yeah i need to start making a late game build for odin and i think life and death vantage is solid but you can't really get that without like some work yeah i i actually think he's i i it's it's hard to say that he's a better life and death vantage sorcerer than like Ophelia because he's not the, the difference between them the, is like the thing is Odin has a lot of skill and a lot of luck and that's something that Ophelia doesn't get yeah so he won't struggle as badly to hit things he's just gonna need some more damage stacking yeah like what we've been saying is he really does he needs investment especially later on hmm uh, yeah, I think he's he's usable throughout the whole game. He's like really ridiculous on like chapter 25 if you have life and death vantage. He's really good. Like having a mage later on is so good. And like mages in general are just good. Like one two range that hits for resistance is, is broken. Uh, it's so good. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right, Niles. Easy. <laughs> Niles is oh okay. He does he have the best personal? Does he? Uh, I... Arguably? Arguably. Because the thing about his personal is it adds another dimension to the game. It Completely. gives you units. He like literally gives you infinite units, basically. It gives you infinite units, and the capturables in Lunatic of Conquest are very good. Yeah. There's like Armor Blow, Falcon Knights, there's Rally Man, who's like the best capturable, even though he comes late, he's really good. There's like Grizzly Wound Ninjas, there's Life and Death, um, Life and Death um, Mechanists and Life and Death Snipers. There's just a lot of, there's Hitaka, there's Gazak, there's Kumagera. There's just so many good capturables. Yeah, and I, th I think it's important to note that Niles, if you don't have sufficient staff bots for like end game cheese, he can get you those. Because he, because at least in Lunatic, uh, I'm pretty sure every single enemy has capped weapon ranks. Oh yeah, so, that's you're so right. It keeps the weapon ranks once you capture them. Yeah, you can you can immediately just get like an S rank staff made or something. And uh, are there S are there capped weapon mages? Then yeah, oh, yeah. Chapter, chapter twenty six. You yeah, chapter eighteen. You get two maids with S rank. Right, staves. right, yeah. So, um, you can get, basically you can get an entire end game team, except for like a Takami <laughs> killer, with Niles. And that is just like one of the most insane things. Um, Not to mention, like him as a unit utility wise is good. He has bows, which is very nice with good resistance. Like on chapter nine, that's really helpful. He's really fast. He has access to movement plus one, and then there's like Shining Bow Niles, which is Shining really Bow great Niles for capturing so enemies. And he's in a great class. He can go into Bow Knight, which is a great class. He gets Rally Skill. He, oh my God, he gets sure he can break her. Oh my God, he just gets a lot of great tools that you'd want in Conquest because of Outlaw. Um, yeah, I I think one of his better like routes to use him as a unit. Uh. I think, like, capturables aside, as a unit, I still think he's really solid. Because he has natural access to Adventure and Bow Knight. And then, uh, if he marries Mozu, 
he will get Archer. So he'll yeah. get a Bowfair Shining Bow Adventurer, or like a Bowfair Bow Knight, which is... Or Kenshi Knight. Or Kenshi Knight, which is really good. And a Lock Touch Kenshi Knight. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, Lock Touch. Lock Touch is so important. He gets Lock Touch, too. He has so much privilege. He, he gets a lot of utility. And... Um, Yep. He, he he just gives a lot to the team. Yeah, he basically he has so many things like as a unit himself that you want in conquest like lock touch movement plus one is very helpful in chapter ten to chase um, Falcon or the I'm just gonna call him Falcon Knights. I forgot the base class, but yeah, you can chase them. Bows are just great throughout the game because enemy flyers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's just really solid. And then on top of that, he has like top two or top three personal in the game. That literally, like you said, it give he can give you an end game team, which is so funny to me. Yeah, because like he can capture the he, you don't even need an trap user because you can capture one of the pass uh, Falcon Knights in chapter twenty four, and then that's that's your rescue user just there. Um, that's crazy. So yeah, Niles is a very very good unit. All right, and then we go to Nyx. <laughs> Nyx is bad. Uh, Nyx, she's oh funny. man, we talked about one of the best units and now we go to one of the worst. So Nyx's problem is she's a frail mage with bad accuracy, but she's a good backpack though. But the problem with being frail as a mage is you can't really use Heartseeker. Like Odin, where it's like, mm, okay, I might not have the best hit race here, but at least I have like plus 20 from Heartseeker. Nyx never wants to get that close to the opponent or the enemy. She will literally die and then there's times where she misses and then she just gets killed. Oh my God, this unit is so frustrating to use. The thing- On top of that, she is one of the worst personals in the game where if she kills the enemy with counter curse, she gets no experience. It's just... Oh. Yeah, so the thing with Nyx, the first thing is, yeah, her accuracy is hilariously bad. Even with Heartseeker, she is- I saw someone do like Heartseeker, Lucky 7 in that like challenge and, they're doing. And, and, she's, and she's not even hitting perfect hit rates with those because it's, her skill is just that bad. Like it, it is actually unsavable um, how bad her accuracy is. Now you can help her a little bit, it, at least in player phase, because she does get friendship with Mozu, and Mozu gives her a certain blow, which is a massive 40 she, hit on she every is player. She dying phase. for a hit. She is dying. She's starving. She needs hit. every hit skill like to do <laughs> anything. She has like good... Of her skills just are hit. Oh my god. She has really good magic. She has really good speed, but she can't yeah, do she can double. anything with them, which is great. Um, <laughs> so... Yeah, I mean, you just need an unreasonable amount of investment to really make her good, and I think her best use is as a Niles or Odin backpack for magic. Or Leo. She's also really good with Leo. Oh yeah, Leo too. Speed for him is really nice, but I mean, maybe if we're counting DLC, she would be better because Witch gives her like insane stat buffs, but we're not counting DLC for this list. Um... But yeah, she's best as a backpack. She's just very inconsistent and she requires like too many resources to kind of like get her up to par with people. Like even, oh my God. But at least she can double and there's some meme builds you can do with her. She she is kind of a meme. <laughs> she is one community. of the, she is one of the units that gets Vantage without Corrin though. So. Oh, oh yeah. Like maybe, maybe she'll Vantage if she might hit them. That's okay. <laughs> But another problem is like, once you get Leo, there's like no point in using her. So she also just gets outclassed like throughout the game. Yeah. Kind of she, sad. It, it, she, it, she's she's in a really rough spot. Or Nyx, but she's a good pair of bot. All right. Low key, low key, Camilla might be the best unit in the game. There's a bunch of reasons. I, I think she is just straight up the best unit in the game. <laughs> you might be right. And the reason is, so she comes on chapter 10, which is a difficult chapter. And she has insane stats. She's one of the fastest units in the game. 
She has great resistance, great defense, great strength. She's also in a class that's really desirable. Like Malignite is really nice to have. Trample and Savage Blow are really good skills. And <clears throat> Rose's Thorns really helps like with calculations early on. Like putting someone next to Camilla is nice, but Camilla's great greatest like virtue early on and she makes everyone else's life so much easier because she can like set up for kills. Rosa Thorns is great, and people don't talk about her magic, where her magic's not great, but she can, like, soften up enemies for kills, and she's great silence bait for, like, chapter 12. Uh, I she's think... really good at baiting silence, because the enemies see her as stronger, and they're like, let's silence that. She's like, I don't care. And then even better, she gets the dual club. So any of her bad matchups, she's just like, oh, what's that? I'll just dual club it. And then, like, on chapter 11, there's so many chapters where she's helpful. Like, chapter 11's literally, like, and, like, most of mid-early game is, like, oh, we have a problem. Let's just throw Camilla at it. It'll probably work because she's so bulky and fast and all of this ridiculous stuff. But her main flaw, I guess, <clears throat> is, like, her HP. But it's very fixable if you, like, pair her up with Keaton to get, like, HP plus 5. And then later on in the game, she falls off a little bit, but then you can just reclass her into Wyvern Lord and she gets like rally defense. She's just so good throughout the game and she doesn't require any investment. Another crazy thing you can do with her is like on chapter 13, if you give her like HP tonic and like a defense boost, she survives Reyna's attack and you can just kill Reyna. It's so funny. Yeah, I was actually gonna mention that. Um, but yeah, Camilla in her joining chapter um, people, people say that she actually kind of struggles in Chapter 10 because she gets ignored by some of the enemies, uh, at least on, like, the easier difficulties, but even then, you can just send her to a different side of the map and she'll just eat all of that while your other units, like, work on the rest of the enemy. Um, it's not really as much of a problem that as people make it out to be, at least I think so. Um, and then after that, she stays consistently good... Uh, especially courtesy of the dual club consistently good up to like chapter 19 where her utility gets a little rough but if you're consistently using her and like leveling her up and like keeping her on par with a bunch of the maybe even reclassing her a little bit she still stays very good and <sighs> Even if you're using her for her magic, she can do a lot of crazy things with, like, the Bolt Axe, for example. So, in Chapter 23, for example, if you put her in the tile above the torch next to Obero's group, she will actually one-round every unit with the Bolt Axe, um, with the proper, you know, like, pair-up. She doesn't even need to yes. reclass, she doesn't need to damage stack, she just needs, like, a Leo pair-up and, like, maybe rally magic. And then she's yeah, just good because, to go. Yeah, and because she's a female, she has access to really good backpacks, like Keaton and, I guess, Arthur and all that stuff. Yeah. Um... I, just... I think, I think people undervalue her magic more, more than I do. I think, I think, I think her... I think I need to stop saying I think, but yeah, her magic is just like really useful throughout the game because if you're not using like Malignite Elise, Camilla's still just like a really solid, she, she might be one of the best Bolt Axe users just because of how little investment it takes to use. That's true. And also she has good resistance, which is great with the dual club to kind of get through mage rooms early on where like Kaze is a Kaze is still helpful there. But like having another unit to just take down mages with the dual club is so nice. And then she's in a flying class. Like, oh my god, they really gave her everything. And um even if you like find her struggling a little bit with like say accuracy, right? She has natural access to Heartseeker. So you can just put her in like Dark Knight for two levels, get Malefic Aura, get Heartseeker, go back into Malignite, and then she just slays. Or, you can go the physical route, you can put her into Wyvern Lord, maybe give her, like, a Berserker pair up, give her Axe Fair or something. Oh, yeah. And she just kills everything. 
Mm -hmm. But the thing to mention is once you get to Hoshido, you really do need to reclass her because she starts to not be as good of a defensive wall. But the reclass is so easy. It's literally like, oh, Wyvern Lord's literally right there. Why not? And she's amazing at it. And it even gives her like better growths. I really like Berserker Camilla. I think I think um, like one of her best routes. If if I'm not keeping her in flyer, I think I would always go Berserker. If yeah, that sounds fun as well. Like Berserker <laughs> Camilla, she's fast. She hits hard. Oh my god. Yeah, it also gets her soul. So like you know, if she's not already dying, or oh, no, if she's not already not dying, she's definitely is not dying now. Um, is yeah, there, and, like Berserker. Like, Axe Fair Trample just sounds so stupid. Um, yeah. But yeah, oh, that's... That's basically it on Camilla. Camilla's probably the best unit in the game, especially in practice, where she's just good throughout the game, easy reclass late game, just not much investment at all. Oh, Dual yeah. Club, bro. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, too, is that she gets natural access Savage Blow, which is yep. notable... Because she's one of the better units for setting up kills from the weaker unit. Mm -hmm. um, I do like that about her a lot is like she just makes everyone else's life easier. Yeah. Especially early on. And then late game, she just has great stats. So yeah, the magic, the savage blow, and then Rose's Thorns on top of that is pretty good support by itself. All right. So Camilla's good. Selena, I'm going to talk about Selena and Laszlo, but we'll talk about Selena first because they're kind of opposites in terms of stats. Where Selena is really good on um, speed, but her strength is very questionable. Um, but I think if you can put her into Wyvern Lord, she becomes a great unit, but she requires a bit of investment. But yeah, Wyvern Lord for Selena is really helpful. Her, she also has access to strong repose. Strong Repose is kind of your main way, at least for me in Chapter 11, to kind of deal with that Oni Savage with a hammer. She just naturally counters it with a Strength Tonic and a Para with like Effie. So she's really good there. Strong Repose makes her a decent enemy phase unit. And then Wyvern Lord is just a fantastic class for later on in the game. You get access to hammer. You just fly around everywhere. Decent utility with like rally um, defense. And on top of that, she can use her speed to just kind of be fast and hit hard and has good defense. So she's not like amazing. Like there are better um, Wyvern Lords in this game, but I think she's similar to Odin where like with investment, she can do stuff throughout the game. Too bad her personal is bad though. I've only activated it like once. <laughs> I I've never but seen yeah. it activate. <laughs> um, Selena for me is like one of those characters that can theoretically work in any class that you want to put her in except for like a magical class and she'll do okay she won't do amazing there are definitely going to be units that do a better job than her but she still does a very solid job and can absolutely make her like a really solid uh even if you never reclass her like she gets just natural access to bow knight and hero like do you really need anything else <laughs> <laughs> it's um, just really fixing her strength stat is the thing like she has good speed defense it's just the strength like she really needs a little bit of help there yeah and it, she has fast support with both camilla and selena selena yeah selena has fast support baruka. with selena. Uh, baruka which both get her access to you know trample strength plus two um really solid offensive skills that fix her strength a lot and also wyvern lord just being a very strong class compared to um you know hero yeah i think what's also funny is on chapter 10 you can promote her instantly into a bow knight and take care of that entire right side yeah she, she'll just kill everything <laughs> yeah she just kills every archer there it's kind of funny but yeah i'd say and she's a female too. Like we've been saying, good backpack access. So the strength stat is very fixable with like a meal, a tonic, and like maybe Arthur or something as her backpack. And then flying just carries through the rest of Conquest for her if she put her in Wyvern Lord. Yeah, definitely. And uh, another thing is that she can give other heroes 
um, Sky Knight, which isn't too significant for most units, but if, say you're doing something like Rally Laszlo, then mm -hmm. it's absolutely a great idea to pair Laszlo with Selina, and then you can just get Rally Speed super easily at Laszlo. Yeah. Um, definitely super useful for support units. Yeah. Selina, I would say, strong if you put her in the right classes and give her some good pair ups and support. Yeah, I think I think there is a good spot to put her. So Lazlo's kind of the opposite, where he has good strength and defense, but bad speed. Well, not bad, but like, it's not great. Where you, but Lazlo has one of the best personals in the game, especially mid game. Fancy footwork plus one speed and strength is very helpful. Unlike chapter 17, where you're really trying to hit speed thresholds and some of the later chapters too. And he also has access to really good rallies. Like you can go Bow Knight and which fixes his speed, gives him rally skill, and then marry him to like Selena to go into Falcon Knight, which gives him darting blow and rally speed, which is so good. Like he needs a little bit of investment, but I think he's a good utility unit. And in Bow Knight, he gets access to bows, which is great, especially like the mid game where you're gonna start facing flyers in like chapter 13 and 14. Um, yeah, yeah, I think Lazlo is just a great utility. He just requires like a little bit of an investment. This is where I would put him personally. I would I would also like to mention that he is one of the easiest soul ninjas. Um, because he requires absolutely no investment other than a heart seal to soul ninja. I feel like that's that's worth noting because soul ninjas are very, very powerful <laughs> in Conquest. Yeah, they're very helpful late game. Um, they're so good late game in Conquest. Like, Soul Ninja. He might not be the best at it. He's not a Silas. He's, he's not a Soleil. Not a but... great Soul Ninja. I, I'm not even sure if he... He's... He, he might even be the worst Soul Ninja out of, out of the... <laughs> out of the common ones, at least. But... He is... I mean, you can't really go wrong with it. Yeah. But I would say to get the most out of him... Put him in Falcon Knight, Rally Skill, Fancy Footwork, and Speed, Darting Blow. He can be kind of a mixed support, mixed attacker, and he gets stabs. Yeah, and if you uh, as well as flying, flying is so good. If you get him friendship with, uh, I believe Keaton, he gets Berserker, which gives him Rally Strength as well. Really good. Yeah, um, that's another thing. Yeah, he can get Rally Strength as well. That's true because he can like, yeah, he's a good Rally bot for sure. I'm not. And sure. he can be a decent attacker with. I'm not sure if there's any other rallies he can get other than that um, without a different partner. Doesn't. I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. I'll say he's similar to Selena, where in the right classes, he can be really, really helpful. Yeah. I, I would say definitely better than Selena. Actually, yeah, yeah, at the top of there is good. Yeah, his like personal is so good Like during that mid game where the enemies are starting to get a little bit stronger mm -hmm. and they're starting to match your stats. Like that plus one speed and strength is so good Yeah, there. Um, Baruka, so Baruka I think is a character. I know you have more experience than me, but how I see it is she's good at a lot of different things. She gets a lot of good things in Conquest. She's in a flying class. She has good skill. Um, decent personal ability. She can do a lot of things well. She could be a decent, like, dual striker because of her personal. She can get utility with rally defense and pair-ups because of Wyvern Lord being so good. And she can do a lot of things well, but nothing, like, insane. She's kind of a jack-of-all-trades. Like, she can contribute in a bunch of different ways. She can be a defensive wall on some chapters. But I think she's a jack of all trades, but there's always a character in that in one specific area that she does that does it better. Um, yeah, I think she, she has a lot of value with her base classes being Berserker and uh, Wyvern Lord, which is a really powerful combo of classes to have, especially when you start getting into the reclassing with partner and friendship seals. Um, she has really good skill. She'll likely never need any real hit boosters because she'll just almost always have insane hit rates herself. Um, so she really doesn't. 
struggle with hitting things. She has really good strength uh, if you put her into Berserker. So you can you can have her just like really one round everything if you get her like a speed backpack. Um, her main problem is that she is pretty limited on what she can do with her like weapons. Like she she really doesn't have great one two range access. If she marries Kaze, she can become a ninja. In fact, she ooh she could do soul ninja, which I've never actually tried. But that but. <laughs> That, that Wait, would that would insane. actually be good because her speed isn't like insane, nor is her resistance, so and that kind of helps. The the thing bit. the thing with Soul Baruka is that her skill is so high, and I believe Soul is uh, skill times one point five, right? I'm gonna look at this up. Yeah, look that uh, quick. Oh yeah, no a trigger is the skill stat, and since she has. <sighs> I would say, on average, she has like 30 skill by the end of the playthrough, especially if you invest into her and give her tonics and stuff. So, um, yeah, like over 30. Which is really good for her, since she'll have high HP with her access to like HP plus 5, which you will get if you're getting soul because of her natural class line, you get HP plus 5 first. Um, and it overall just makes her like a solid unit. I don't know. Yeah, she's. Because of her skill, she's a very consistent character. Yeah. And... But she can kind of be outclassed in a few areas. Like if you want a Wyvern Lord, you can go Xander or Camilla. If you want a Rally Support, you can go Laszlo. If you want a tank, you can go like Benny or this. But she does a lot of things. She can contribute in a lot of different ways. And I think that's what makes her valuable. I, I actually think, well, th this is a conquest here list, but I, I do want to say that she is very much better in Rev then she uh, is in Conquest because she gets access. Priestess. Priestess, one of the best classes. Oh, the Priestess Renewal build. <laughs> also, because of her skills, she can crit more than other characters, which is kind of unfair. <laughs> yeah, she crits yeah. a lot, which... She is a fine character to get crits with. Uh, if, if you're getting crits with a character, I think Peruka is a solid and like safe option because she It's better than like <laughs> She struggles to die with the right build. Um you have to like try to get her killed, really. Um so I'll say I, here. I, it's like a good place. Yeah, I would say that's good. I think she's a little bit worse than Odin because um she require I, I would say she requires less investment than Odin, but she doesn't have that early game ability that Odin has. Yeah. Alright, so parry. Um I haven't used parry that much, but I can see so parry's biggest problem is she kind of gets outclassed. Cause early on you get Silas, and he's there for more chapters to get more experience. And then in a few chapters you get Xander which is a great unit. And Perry, I don't know, but she has shelter utility. She's in a good class. Um, unlike Silas, she has good resistance, which can be okay. Um, but I mean, like Perry's like the best cook in the game. <laughs> so that's something she has going for her, but I don't really use Perry that much just cause she gets up class kind of hard. Yeah, so I think Perry's biggest problem is, uh, I mean, a lot of people will go to her skill as the first thing. She has pretty bad skill, and she really struggles to hit things. And that that's a, a fair concern. But what I really think hurts her the most is the fact that her base class is Cavalier, which is not that good in Conquest. And then It's okay. Well... Shelter is good. I'll just Sh say that. Shelter is good. The skills are great, but ground you want to be in a flying class for sure. Uh And then her heart seal is sorcerer and dark knight, which is terrible for her. She has no <laughs> magic. Uh, I believe her personal magic growth is 10%. Um she uh, I mean, I have a video that's called Sorcerer Perry Good, where she like vantage sweeps the entirety of like the entire left side of chapter 25. That took DLC. 
Like, she can't even do it with max investment without DLC. It's crazy how hard you have to work to get her to sweep. And she even, like, needs, really needs Corrin to do amazing things. Now, she can do okay things. If she, like, marries Laszlo, for example, you can put her into Bow Knight. She has a decent sword rank already. I believe she has, uh, she starts with, like, B in Sword, which isn't the best, but it's not, um, you know, it's a good starter, at least. And then you can work on her bow ranks, uh, which fixes a lot of her problems, which is the fact that she is pretty bad. I don't know, because bows are fairly accurate, right? So I feel like yeah. bows fix a lot of what her biggest issues are, along with putting her in a actually decent class. Does she have any good support ranks? Um, she has a fast support with Laszlo. And he gives her what? Hero. Hero? And, uh, Bone Knight. I mean, that's not helping her out enough. Like, you really want flying, like, for later on. Like, she comes at a point in Conquest where you don't... Like, grounded mounted units are starting to, like, not be as good. And you really want to have, like, daggers flying or, like, some sort of utility to... Because that difficulty spike, when it hits, it's gonna hit. So I, I think I think you can get away with Bow Knight. Um I Bow Knight is just like a really solid class all around. You can really keep a unit in it the whole game. Like Niles, for example, he is a unit that could arguably want to stay in Bow Knight. Um But I, I definitely see what you mean that like it, it's definitely not a class that she would really want to be in. Um I think a more ideal option would probably get her, like, a dragon core in marriage. True. Uh, but to make that's, her, like, a solid that is asking for a bit. Yeah. But we have kind of failed to talk about her personal ability. Her personal, her personal ability is actually pretty nice on paper. It gives her plus four strength, speed, and... Does it give her speed? I know a plus four strength It's skill. It's strength, magic, skill, and speed. Which is pretty nice on paper, especially in this game where shelter singing is really good. So you can take advantage of it, but one problem is it doesn't stack with rallies. The problem so... is to use it effectively, you need to use Azura without Replicate. And the only way to get Replicate on her is with Corin or Kaze. And they'll likely not want to marry her. So... It puts her in a rough spot, because she has an awesome personal, but she just... She requires a lot of effort to actually utilize. It's a good personal on the wrong character, because, like, kind of what we're seeing is Perry doesn't have good classes to get access to, to really abuse that. Like, in a flying class, that would be so awesome, but she doesn't get that super easily, and... Her, you said her skill is bad, which hurts her consistency, but I can see some chapters where having, because like there are some chapters where enemy phasing is very huge, and having access to like D lances for the beast killer is really nice. So I can see her good on like 17 and 18, where enemy phasing on certain parts of the map are very integral. So I can see her here. I don't think she's bad. Yeah, uh, I, I, don't I know. she can work with heavy investment but if you don't want to put heavy investment into her she is okay for a few chapters okay. <laughs> i know someone else was talking about perry and they said because of her personal and some other stuff when the difficulty spikes hits she can be decent like she can kind of overcome it but i think the biggest problem is she gets outclassed by xander and silas and she doesn't have access to good classes to really bring out her fullest potential. But she is a good cook. That, that's very good. Very good cook, yes. She's a very good cook. All right, Benny. Benny is the definition of underwhelming, but good on specific chapters. The absolute definition. So Benny, Benny's biggest flaw, he's too <laughs> slow. He, oh my God, like speed isn't really a problem in this game because of inspiring song, Tonics, 
good backpack like backpacking and stuff. But like Benny is just too slow. Like it's a problem. To where he needs Wary Fighter and being too slow it means you're gonna have trouble killing later on. And that's very significant. But Benny is a great wall. He has decent resistance. And there are some chapters where he's really good. Like chapter um, 17, 19, 20, and 21 are when he shines the most. Cause those are chapters where you having a defensive wall that just sits there and holds it for you is really nice. Um, yeah, I, I'm actually a bit biased towards Benny because he has uh, saved my very first uh, Conquest Iron <laughs> Man I did on, uh, on hard mode. But the only Iron Man that I've ever attempted a Conquest, then he just carried the run there. Um, so yeah, like like you said, in in Chapter 17 and Chapter 19, he's a very defensive tank. He has access to the Beast Killer. Um, lances and axes are very powerful weapons and to his, be able to carry. And he's a really good personal. He has a very good personal, yes. <laughs> I, I wish it was on a better unit. Um, I think... What hurts him the most is his strength stat. Because And he's not very fast. Cause like being not having the best strength, if you can double, it's very good. You can make it work. But he can't double super without a lot of resources. Um, yeah, so he he is one of the few units that I would say really needs Wary Fighter to do anything. And he luckily gets it naturally, and it's I would I would say general. He would always want to promote to general rather than knight anyways. Um, that said, it doesn't fix his biggest problem, which is other than chapter nineteen Kitsune Lair, he will struggle a lot to actually kill things since he's only doing one hit. He only gets one chance to kill things unless he crits. He will not kill. Or hit for effective damage with like a beast killer or a yeah. thing. And yeah, okay, so he's he's a solid dual striker, he's a solid backpack. Uh in chapter 21, he's one of the better units to uh to use because he gets access to the Blessed Lance and he's a general, yeah. so he has a lot of defense. Um in fact I believe he's uh, uh other than um child units, of course, he is the bulkiest you can get a general to be maybe without Corin. i think Corin is bulkier because i did see a run of someone where they didn't promote units and they had their Corin as like have defense plus two and a general um talent just for that run because nobody was promoting and Corin was tankier like she took zero damage on 21 i was like what is going on here <laughs> With the dragon stone, but yeah, it's between him and Corrin, very defensively bulky. But I mean, unlike Corrin, he has Benny has good resistance, like decent re workable resistance. I'm not gonna say amazing, but it's definitely not amazing. <laughs> it's not amazing, but it's workable. It's like higher than Effie's, but you can make it work with like a good pair up and a tonic and stuff. He can he can do his yeah his stuff. he he can work until I would say chapter twenty two where he's like he starts struggling a lot. <laughs> Well, 22, because the thing is, like, after that point, they start mixing in, like, mages with other units and, like, a bunch of attackers who are physical and magical and that are also kind of fast. Hmm. Yeah, so but, it's just... It, it's a little bit of a struggle for him in uh, <laughs> in that sense, because he just... Once they start mixing, like, fast units, like, mages and a bunch of, like, bigger clumps of enemies, it's hard for him. So. Yeah, it it definitely is. But there are definitely chapters where he shines. Like, he's probably the easiest solution to chapter 19 with the Beast Killer, by far. Like, oh my god, he just sweeps 19. Yeah, he's one of but, the more brain dead options, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a very simple solution to that chapter. And chapter 21, he... Like, there are definitely chapters later on where it's like, I need a physical tank to just sit here and take hits, and he can definitely do that. But, but yeah. Another thing is he can get access to Wyvern, but he kind of has the Baruka problem where he just 
he's not, he kind of gets outclassed as a Wyvern Lord. He's actually worse than Baruka, because, yeah, I don't know. I just, he's not that great as a Wyvern Lord. There's better options. But. Yeah. All right, so Charlotte, so I think Charlotte has a lot of good things going for her. I think she is the best physical mother in the game. Um, she's a very fun unit to use um, by herself. She's a glass cannon. They gave her all the speed, all the strength, all the HP, but like her defenses are bad, <laughs> but she can hit really hard. On top of that, she gets rally strength and access to Axe Fair to pass down to her children. Like she's a really good mother and she can be a decent like mix attacker. And she's at a point in the game where rally strength starts to become very, very helpful. Like around chapter 19, 18-ish. And onward, rally strength starts to become very significant as a tool. And I think that's super helpful to get it. Um, and she's fast and axes are very good in this game because of the dual club. So I would put her here, like she's more of a utility unit. She also gives good backpacking where if you pair her with xander she's very good but i think what separates her from these two is like her utility but i don't know what do you think i'm gonna put her back down um yeah i i think honestly as a combat unit i would say that she's rather underwhelming in berserker um you can do really cool things with her though i think one of her best routes is to make her a soul maid, which she can do by promoting into hero and then reclassing into maid with a heart seal. And then um, she immediately becomes a good candidate for just like soul strat. She can do it, it, it's like diet soul ninja, basically. You can, <laughs> it's we have soul ninja at home. Um, so. She, she is really good in that aspect. She can, like, destroy Chapter 19 with uh, Hunter's Knife and Maid. You can also go the utility route, where she's an insane Berserker pair-up. She's got access to Rally Strength. She has access to Rally Resistance and Demoiselle and Inspiration. Uh, you can get her even more uh, utility through... Like marriage classes and I forget I forget her heart seals to be on, or her friendship seals but uh, I'm, I'm sure they're fine but um yeah I, 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 think, I think she's think... overall solid I I would put her oh not there I'll put her worse like she... than probably worse than Felicia but a little better than Izana. Like uh, she's no. definitely a utility. I think she's just better as a utility unit, but she can do some combat stuff. She has good growths for that. Just she might not want to take too many hits. It, it, it feels a little weird to put her better than Azana, but I think accessibility is a big thing too. Yeah. And she's just such a good mother. Like passing She is down a really good spirit. mother, yeah. Her passing down rally strength and just like her pair of bonuses are ridiculously good. And she can kind of fix some of her problems with the dual club in combat. So, yeah. yeah she's, Glass cannon, but also a good utility unit. She's she's a natural, um, you know, she's naturally in the fighter class, so she has very good dual strikes as long as you remember to take off Gamble. Uh, oh, yeah, Gamble. Oh, my God. She gets Gamble on chapter 13. 13. Oh, no. So you have to give her a bronze axe. Bronze oh, Axe doesn't even really save it all, I don't think, but... I, bronze Axe plus one? <laughs> it it helps. <laughs> I, I don't think That kind of sucks, and she has Gamble. Like, and she starts she box. starts with a Steel Axe. Like, she has a rough start. They're like, yeah, she might hit them, but she might not. Probably <laughs> they really won't. Good on that chapter. Um, um, all right. Leo, okay, Leo, I'm kind of puzzled. He's either one of these two. So Leo is a great mixed tank. He has great stats. He comes at a really good time in the game. But I don't know. He doesn't require too much investment besides speed. But that can easily be fixed because around chapter 14, 
You probably have an X rank for Ophelia with Odin and Elise to get the Horse Spirit. I think Horse Spirit really helps Leo quite a lot to start doubling. And then he has access to Heartseeker, which is nice, and Brynhildr, which is just a solid. I mean, it's basically, I think it's like a Thunder plus two, just a fancy named Thunder plus two Brynhildr. And, but it's still good. I don't know, Leo is solid. But I don't know, I can't see him as game-defining. But he's, I don't know. Yeah, he's definitely not, like, gonna make or break your run. I think some people do overvalue Leo than I think he should be. That said, uh, in, in a run where you're, say, you know, not really using any mages except for Leo, or you're just, like, not really, like, reclassing your units that much, I think Leo is the best mage because he can I actually can he can survive enemy phase and that's the big difference because while Odin can survive enemy phase he usually what what's the speed difference again uh I forget so uh, I'm I'm looking it up really quickly yeah for sure um, so Leo has a 50% uh, speed growth and Odin has a 45% speed growth, so Leo's speed is a little better. And with proper investment, I think Leo has a lot easier of a time yep. killing things on enemy phase as well, which is a really big difference. Like, give him, say, Selina pair up. I've done, I've done Selina and Leo before. And Selena gives him like five speed right off like the bat, pretty much, and it's just he he can just eat entire halves of stages, much like Odin can with Nosferatu, but he can just do it with Brynhildr. He doesn't even need any yeah. like special um, special healing. He can just like say chapter chapter sixteen for example with a good speed pair up, maybe like a speed tonic and speed wing. Uh, the speed wing from like chapter 15, he will double and kill absolutely everything on the right side. Even the left side too, honestly. <laughs> I think to get like the most out of him, I think you have to do the Ophelia parallel. Like Horse Spirit, that plus three speed defense and stuff. It, it really does help Leo a lot. But also another thing is Leo can get access to life and death sorcerer with um, either a Felicia or Baruka marriage with a friendship shield. With, no, with a real... Oh my god, what's it called? Odin friendship? No, not a friendship seal, partner seal. Yeah, with a partner seal, he can get life and death and go back into either Malignite from Baruka or a strategist from, a from Felicia. Seal to get access to it without a heart seal. So like if you spent all of your heart seals, then it's possible to get a life and death sorcerer for late game through Leo. And that's kind of cool. I mean, it's not like, I don't know, that's very, it's good on his part for resources. So I think it's just worth mentioning. Does he, wait, does he get a uh, master of arms from Felicia? Oh, wait, I mean, friendship with Odin. Yeah, yeah, yeah do... that's the, okay. <laughs> oh, wait, oh my god, no, he doesn't just get it from these two. But yeah, he can get friendship with Odin, and then either a partner of Baruka or Felicia, you can partner seal him into a strategist or a malignite to do something similar. Maybe not as well, but he can do it. He can get it done. And also, he has sorcerer access like later in the game once you get the tier three shops, which is pretty good for his end game. Yeah, and if, if, if you're willing, tank. if you're willing to, you can get him core in marriage for Omioji Talon and get him Tome Fair if you really want, but- uh, If you really want to. I don't but, recommend it, but you can do it. And he, but he it will do, work. He can do some silly stuff with classes. Like he has access to good classes. Yeah. Which is nice. Um, but overall, yeah, I, I would put him in solid because, uh, you know, even, even if you don't really do anything with him, if you don't put on a lot of investment with him, it's like, really much like Kaze, except instead of against uh, magical units, he's really good against physical units. I think that's the main difference. 
Yeah, he's tanky as a mage, and he's in a uh, mounted class, which is actually pretty decent. Um, you do kind of want to reclass him later on, but I don't know. He's actually a good enemy phase mage, which is really nice, and he gets life taker on top of it, which is also pretty cool. His personal is kind of eh, like uh, it's what does it do again? It's like if they're at it's four uh, HP, it's plus three damage dealt and minus one taken to uh, against injured foes. See, that would be good, but it can be good with like Nosferatu. Yeah, it, it, it's it's solid with Nosferatu tanking, but the problem with that is you put him in Sorcerer, and I, I'm not a big fan of Sorcerer Leo, but... I'm not either, but it does help like him much later in the game once he really once there's some really threatening enemies that you want to survive on, like yeah, Endgame yeah. in Chapter 26. But also the Calamity Gate helps him. Like, mages are good. Same, with, same reason as um, Wyverns. Because of the Calamity Gate, they kind of eliminate all of their bad matchups, which is very helpful. And I, I would like to to mention that Dark Knight pair up actually crazy. <laughs> um, oh, that's true. It gives defense. It gives magic. It gives move, which is really good. Like you can put Leo on Camilla, and they'll just slay together. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> but Leo's main flaw that you want to fix is his speed. Give him a good backpack, like Felicia. You said Selena can be good. Nyx is also helpful. Force Spear is immensely helpful in this character. So that's why you got to do the Ophelia Paralog. Yeah, Ophelia yeah, Paralog. Fixing his speed the is Calamity. Big. Help him a lot. Yeah, the Calamity Gate will also help. Calamity Gate is just so busted in this game. It's so <laughs> helpful. Dual weapons are stupid. <laughs> I love dual weapons. Too bad there's no like dual Yumi or dual, dual Katana in this game. That would be so good. All right. So Keaton, Keaton is actually a pretty good dual striker and backpack, but the problem is um, Wolfsinger, Wolfsegner, I don't know how to say it. Wolfsegner. It has one range, which is terrible. It's yeah. so bad. Oh, his but... his issue is that like you, he has good stats. He has very, very good stats, but his biggest problem is that can't get in a class where he can really use this that's well uh true most people end up putting him into uh, just a backpack uh he he has he's a really good backpack because wolf segner and berserker access those are like some of the best backpack classes in the game um they give strength they give speed it's like <laughs> it's really really good but I, I think I think defense too, but um, it gives plus four speed, plus four strength as Wolf Segner. Yeah, Wolfsinger. I know they're gonna like murder me in the comments for not pronouncing that, but yeah. Uh, and it is only one range, which is just later on in conquest. That's not a good thing. But I think him hitting for beast weakness is really nice on like chapter eighteen, where there's like a bunch of riders on the right side like bottom right so i've used them there you can use them in a few other places because of beast weakness being nice i would put him here i don't think he's bad like he has a utility and because of beast weakness he's really good uh, and he's also not a bad dual striker but i i, I, I would i would put him better than benny personally because like if you if you invest in him a lot he can definitely do some pretty crazy stuff, but he is generally subject to to backpacking duty. Other than he's really good in his uh, starting chapter, he's really good in like the fact that he just gets beast pain. Is... Um, and then and like we've been saying with like Soul Master Ninja with the Hunter's Knife, it's not as good, but like beast weakness matters a lot late game in Conquest. Yeah, you can also make him like an HP beast where he gets. He gets natural access to HP plus five, even or better odds and soul, um, which will let him survive quite easily. Uh, yeah. His big problem, though, is I believe he is pretty unskillful. Let me just uh, double check that really quickly. Um, he reminds me of Yar yeah, from he, Awakening. 
Oh, he, he only has a 25% growth in skill, and he starts with uh, 10 skill, which is not that great. But, you know. He reminds me of, like, Yarn from Awakening. Like, have you ever played Awakening? I have. You have? Yeah. He reminds me of Yarn from that game where, like, he doesn't have access to good abilities, and, like, one range is not great. But at least in this game, you have, dual, you have attack stance, which helps him, and he's a good backpack, so... Mm -hmm. That helps his viability. I don't know, he just reminds me a lot of Yarn from that game where he's not super great. But Yarn was a chill demon, so... Yeah. Right. Overall, um, good backpack, beast weakness is really nice on some chapters, but... Other than that, he's kind of... Also, one last thing, his personal is really good, depending on if you've modded the game or not. <laughs> Is, uh, um, his well, personal is actually pretty solid. It, it's useful if you're playing on on console or something, but um, just just use like action replay or something, please. Just use action. If you're not cheating, his personal is pretty good. But other than that, if you're cheating or using mods, then it's not that. It's kind of useless. It, it's like rare candies. It's morally okay. It just saves you from. Yeah. All right. right, we got um, a big one. Can I go first? We got with the this? not Rio. He's not Rioma, but he's still he's still okay. Really good. I think I think he's the most brain dead character in the game. Brain dead? No. Absolutely. I mean, he's good. Absolutely. I wouldn't say. Okay, I'll let you speak. Okay, so the thing with Xander is that in Conquest, the AI will not attack you if you have high enough defense. And Xander gets natural plus four to defense because of Siegfried. And what makes that significant is that it allows him to just cheese strat everything. Chapter 17, he's one of the best physical walls there. You can just completely shut down every enemy in the map. Um, chapter 19, you can reclass him into Wyvern Lord, which he gets natural access to. He already has the Lance rank for the Beast Killer, so you don't even have to invest in him. You can just kill that entire map, too. In, uh, chapter 18, he also gets Siegfried, which is really good, because you can just stick him on, like, stairs or something and just have him go crazy. Um, in... He, he's not as good in Chapter 20 because there's a lot of mages, but in Chapter 21, if you keep him in Wyvern Lord, uh, and assuming that you went with the route of, you know, just sweeping everything with the Beast Killer with Xander, you're going to have C rank in Lances, which will let him use the uh, Blessed Lance, and then he just never dies in Chapter 21 either. In Chapter 22... You can put him on the left side, reclass him into a sword class, and he will, he, preferably hero, yes. Uh, hero, oh man, yeah. And he just eats every map. Like, he'll, he'll then, destroy chapter 23, mind. he'll destroy chapter 24, he'll, he's okay in chapter 25, and then he'll destroy in chapter 26 again. Which one is chapter? Which one's the Yago chapter? That's chapter twenty five. That's uh, twenty six. Yeah, chapter twenty six. He he's so helpful in that like berserker armor room as a soul. Oh my god! If you and, get him like Laszlo friendship or Selena marriage or uh, what's her name Charlotte marriage. Yep. He cannot die. He is the he most. Won't like especially because like he gets soul and aegis so aegis solves the problem with resistance and with a good pair up he's fast enough to double on top of that he gets elbow room shelter and rally defense as utility wait just shelter and rally defense as utility yeah so he even on turns where you're like eh, i don't know if i want to attack things it's like okay but you can rally defense shelter sing do whatever and just he gets so much good stuff, and he has the best sword in the game, because swords generally aren't that great in this game, because there's the only ones that are 1-2 range are like the Kadachi and Levin. Levin sword's very exclusive, and Kadachi sucks later on. But Siegfried, um, it's unrestricted, it gives him plus 4 defense, and it's just really broken. 
The nice thing about Xander, especially in his natural class set too, is that he also has natural access to lunge, which I feel like we have not been talking about enough because lunge, lunge? is one I think of the lunge most is more important for broken character, like broken skills. Because the thing with lunge on Xander specifically is that he gets a one-two unrestricted one-two range sword. No other character can have that except for Ryoma, which is not in this game. So the fact that he just gets natural access to that and he can survive just lunging through a wall and just killing everything through there. Yep. I th it's just like it it's so easy to once like once you get him, it's just so easy to sweep the rest of the game with him. And yeah, Xander because of what he has access to, he has access to great backpacks like Charlotte. He basically has access any problem that is thrown at him in Conquest can be solved if you plan ahead. He can get access to abilities to solve that problem. He's not Ryoma, where he could literally, like, he requires a little more investment than that. He's not Ryoma, but he's still really good. His defense is amazing. The only thing is his speed, which is fixable with good backpacks, tonics, inspiring meals. The list goes on, really. Yeah, and Xander is Xander's so good. I, I I always go between thinking that Camilla's the best character or Xander's the best character because the thing between them is that while Camilla stays consistently good, is more accessible throughout the entire game, arguably has better class sets, but that's up for debate. Um, the thing with Xander is that he has cheese strats. He can cheese strat yep. so many maps. And while Camilla can do that, Xander needs a lot less investment to be able to do it. And uh, that's that's I what think, I think. I think it depends areas. on like what your playstyle and what you value, and what you think is like more difficult. It's if you value the early game of Conquest and like maximizing experience for the late game, Camilla's definitely your girl for that. But if you're like trying to get through late game and you're like, I just want to beat the game, yeah, Conquest is annoying or whatever, then. Xander was soul lunge de defender and all of that stuff just oh my god he's so good later on and then he gets a flying class he he's got everything you want to just cheese the game yeah for sure but yeah he's so he's just so good and then he's in a mounted class his character's broken all right um oh i almost called this felicia this is not felicia this is flora Floor is bad. Um, main problem, well, there's two. The first one is she comes way too late, especially because, like, maid at that point is not very good. Like, Demoiselle is okay, but in order to, like, at that point, it's kind of like Elise, comparing her to Elise, where, like, Elise has Demoiselle, Rally, Resistance, if you go down the Troubadour path, Elise Poise, like, it's just not enough. And another problem is you... By the time you get her, you could have captured a maid with S rank staves that has better support rank, I mean, better weapon ranks than her. So she's so replaceable. And then she has no supports besides like Corrin. And overall, it's just, I think she might be the worst unit in the game. She just comes so late, nothing's really given to her, nothing to make her stand out. And she's in kind of a sus class at that point. And she could easily be replaced by a capturable mage like. In chapter 18 or in a few chapters, it's like, yikes. Um, yeah, I, th I think part of me wants to say that she's at least better than Nyx, but I think the problem with her is that she has next to no availability. And, like, she joins on chapter 19, where she can admittedly do some stuff with, like, maybe the Hunter's Knife, but then after that, She's like, if if you really, really want her to be your mage killer, you probably do it. But she has no supports other than Felicia, which doesn't even get her a class. Um, I believe the only thing she has unique from Felicia is the fact that she gets access to Sorcerer naturally. But I think Felicia can just... Yeah, no, not even I think. I know because uh, Felicia can marry every male in the game, that she could just get that herself with Leo or Odin. So it's just, like, anything that Flora 
can do, Felicia can do better, or Jacob can do better. And I think um, I think that just really kills her. Yeah, she just joins at a really bad time in the game, and she gets nothing. She's not even a good backpack like Arthur and Nyx. And overall, she just, uh, it's really unfortunate, really unfortunate for her. I mean, I guess her personal is cool. Like when I first was playing Conquest, I was like, that's the best personal in the game. And it's so fun to use. But like now I'm looking at her, I'm like, yeah. I not really. She, it's not really. Availability is an issue, just doesn't really get any utility that other characters can't do better. Just, And then on top of that, a slap in the face is you could have captured a mage made with S rank stabs, which completely beats her. Yeah, definitely. Niles. <laughs> Thanks, Niles. The good thing about her is uh, if you're not using Niall, she gets naturally, uh, like at chapter 19, I believe she gets uh, B in staves, so, um, f free and trap user. Free and trap. That, you know what? Just for that. <laughs> Absolutely. Actually, like, all right, so that's the main cast. We're going to move on to the kids. And before we talk about the kids... The kids are kind of interesting in this game, but you have to think about their paralogs because some of them are really difficult and hurts their availability. And then you have to think about, there's a lot of fat more factors that goes into what kids have. And we're going to mention the paralogs too, because I think they're important. Um, yeah, so I guess, I guess I'll start off with uh, Midori then. Yeah. Midori. Um, she has among the easy okay so if if you're just trying to beat it midori is by far the easiest paralog in the game other than of course mozu because um you can one turn it you spawn insanely close to the boss and the boss is an adventurer so you can just attack her from one range with like any strong unit that's able to kill her um there will be no consequences you can just end the map as a yeah. unit, I think Midori usually is just subject to money bot because her personal skill gives an extra 20% to luck based skills and then she gets natural access to uh, the merchant line so she gets profiteer and that just makes her like most people, and I feel like this is kind of like really what you should probably want to do with her, is just make her a money bot, because money is a very valuable resource, obviously, in, in Conquest. Um, yeah, money's so tight. Like, we mentioned with, like, Kaze and Niles and even Shura, like, Lock Touch is a great ability in this game. So getting any access, extra access to money is fine. But I think Midori as a unit is like pretty underwhelming as a combat unit. I know somewhere, I think someone said you could get like a hundred percent miracle build with her because of her personal. But I that sounds like a lot of investment. But yeah, I don't know. I don't think she's that good. But her paralog is easy. Because if the paralog is easy, you're more apt to just like go through it and get it. Or if the rewards are good, like some of these other ones that you're more willing to do it rather than just skip it. Yeah, and, so, um, and another bonus about uh, getting Midori, like her accessibility, is that um, Kaze is one of the units that get built support with Korin in the prologue chapters, which means that if you want to pair Kaze with Korin, then uh, you can start with a C support, which is uh, an extra step closer to getting Midori uh, even faster. I would put her here, like... Paralog's easy, like, she's not bad, it's super easy to pick her up, the money's important. What? what's... Like, but that's like a deployment slot just for money, which is kind of weird. She, she's, she's kind of an interesting unit, like, as a... I, I, I like her for the fact that she gets Mechanist naturally, so she can get Replicate really easily. Um, and if she didn't get Mechanist from Kaze, she would have had it from, you know, her... Uh, merchant line and on top of that she gives other units of other like gen 2 units access to apothecary which means 
uh, all of her friendship options and all the male units, um, except for Kana, if you know Kaze married Corin, will be able to get access to potent potion, which is one of the better skills in the game, I would say. I mean, it's okay. You can like use a vulnerary and move again, where. I mentioned earlier with like now that that's uh that's quick sell. Potent potion is the one that boosts the effects of all oh, the effects. But at the same time, like think about it, you're spending money to do that. You are spending already... money to do that, and it's you're like... spending money to do that that you just got from Midori, so it's kind of like canceling itself out a little bit. But the yeah, the thing the thing with her is that it's just. Like, like what I said you could do with her with like quick salve and potent potion it's just like it's fun obviously but it's just not that accessible and I think yeah. that is a big thing with it because... I think good on specific chapters just to get money is fine but like some chapter deployment slots are very tight where I'm like I need a rally unit I need Camilla I need Xander here I need these guys but her payload is easy which is nice, and you get a dragon herb from it, which is nice. But yeah, you can use her for money. Do you think this is good, like, putting her here? Um, I would say that... She's... I, I would put her in utility, to be honest. Because, um... I, I think she is very valuable for... For the fact that she gets money, because... You know, you even though that... You can do a lot of things that cost money with her it's really easy to just get right back because nine times out of ten you can just spend all seven turns and you will get the money true but at the same time like mozu could do that better yeah mozu's luck isn't that good oh oh that's your sure personal never mind she can do it all right so sophie i think sophie might be the best child unit in the game if you give her like a good mother for Silas. So the nice thing is Silas comes really early. You can give Camilla as her mother and she basically has like Camilla stats as a cavalier and it's kind of insane. And she gets shelter, elbow room, and then natural access to flying. If you give her like Camilla, like that's how I play it. If I was to get Sophie, I would pair her with Camilla as a mother. Um, and, I'm... Know, she's really good. I'm a big fan of Mozu Sophie. She isn't like the greatest in terms of her like class lines, but uh, I think aptitude really helps her out. I've I've done um, I've I've done Dreadfighter Mozu Sophie, and it's really insane. Like she's she she just dominates. Uh, obviously, Dreadfighter is an insane class, um, and this uh, this is. Or DLC, but uh, that's that's like one of my only experiences with Sophie, and she's just she just she can do a lot of amazing things. Um, yeah, her paralogs also. It seems hard, but it's like kill boss, so it gets the three houses treatment, where I just literally fly over to the boss, kill him, and I'm like, oh, that's it. And and if you really want, you can like. The, the nice thing about Sophie, too, is that she gets uh, natural access to Bow Knight. So even, like, ignoring what her mother gives her or what Silas could give her. Um, well, Silas gives her, you know, <laughs> the the mercenary line. But um, mm -hmm. ignoring, like, skills and, like, and the likes. She's just solid. Like, she, she gets... She's she's in the same boat as Silas, where she just has like decent class options and uh, that's to do it with. I would put her here. I'd see her here. Here, game defining is a bit of. There's definitely one unit that goes here for sure. That I might that you might know what I'm thinking about, but yeah, I, she's I have definitely something solid. Like with the right mother, I think Camilla's good. Mozu can be good. She she's in a good class for she's. Well, I wouldn't say a good class. She's in a class with good abilities for Conquest. And then you can reclass her. Yeah. Um, um, she can do Soul Master Ninja. And with her personal ability, it's pretty good. Where so. is she getting Ninja? 
Oh wait, I'm confusing. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. Is any of these children? She, she, she does. She can get mechanist. Yes, oh, I think right. through. Um... No, no, no. She can. She can marry Kana. Oh yeah, that's true. But I don't know. I'd but... say she's definitely here. I might move it up. Like looking at the other child units. Okay, so Dwyer. So Dwyer's paralog is really annoying. If you don't one turn it. <laughs> If you don't one turn it, this chapter takes forever. I do not like this chapter. I mean, this paralogue. But you can one turn it, which is easy. And personally, I think Dwyer could be really good late game. Like, I pair Jacob with Azura, and you get um, Voice of Peace, Inspiration, Rally Defense, and he can naturally just get wyvern rider yeah and you can also pair like jacob with uh felicia they have a fast support so they can like get a very fast uh s rank and it, it, it's an easy way to get a solid support unit um dwyer himself comes with a sun festal and a physics staff which is very valuable and also i think mend um so he has he has some like really really good loot on him at the start and then after that he has since he's a child unit he can start with really good staff rank really good tome rank and uh, if you want to put him in butler decent dagger rank too and I think yeah he, he he's overall just like a a solid support unit, but you probably aren't gonna want to do much else with him. Yeah, he can. He comes. You can get him really early, which is cool. I think he's good as a malignite, um, just as a flying class, or just like a supportive. He's kind of similar to Elise in a way. Yeah, I can, can see that. Way. I can see that working. Like that's that's kind of how I see him. His personal. It's good late game because if he's in a castle, he gets like plus two, minus two damage. Plus minus two received, plus two damage dealt, and there's some castle levels later on in co conquest when you get to Shirasagi. So I don't know. He can be okay. He comes really early. His paralog's easy. Um, so I'd say um, I don't know. I put him here. I I, I never really I never really use this combat, but I imagine that if you put him in butlers, magic's really good with the flame lance. Flame lance. What am I saying? Flame lance. <laughs> Engage filled, but um. Flame Shuriken. I would put him here. He could be solid because yeah. he comes early. Yeah, he comes early, which is nice. Well, it, de so, it depends on what your servant is. To bear. Like, if you have Felicia before Jacob, then you're you're, you're gonna take a while to get him. I think it's That's an important true. thing to mention because I feel like generally Felicia is better early on than Jacob. I'm I'm not sure. I think Felicia's better because there's more male tanks that want Demoiselle. Yeah, if we're looking through Dwyer as a support unit, I think I think I, I think but... Dwyer is probably better than Laszlo, but not worse better than. Them. So put him here. Yeah, I would say that. So Kana Kana has one of the best paralogs for grinding in the game. It's really easy. Um, I normally like what I would do is I like pair corn with Jacob early on and just to have that wiggle room of the two extra pair logs to grind certain stuff before I guess part two of conquest so after chapter 15 and Han is also a great unit in general are they game defined I don't know um I feel like Kana is a unit that honestly kind of struggles unless you specifically are planning to use Kana. Because the thing with Kana is that for the most part, the reason why you've made your Corrin, uh, like the talent that you made, like you gave them, or the boon and bane that you gave them, and then uh, the partner that you gave them, it's usually for the benefit of Corrin and not Kana. That is true. That said, I think if you plan for Kana specifically, Kana can excel very well. 
The problem is, it's usually not that practical to want to do that. Yeah, but I mean, the paralog is so easy and helpful. The paralog is very easy. I'll, <laughs> I guess I'll give Kana that, but yeah, as, as a unit... That's either I, solid. I, I would say plus. in the in like the middle, probably maybe like I, I would say better than Charlotte. Is I, th I think where I would want to put her because the the thing with Kana is that I think the way the best thing to do with Kana if you're planning for Corin alone is to make Kana a rally bot. Usually Corin will be able to give Kana or Corin or you know Corin's partner will be able to pass on a more supportive skill which will let Kana really easily get into a supportive role and I feel like that is generally more important for Kana than it is uh, if you tried to go for like an attacking build yeah I think what you said is very true where trying to build you have to either build towards Corrin or Kana and they both kind of clash with each other which can be really awkward and I don't know similar to like Morgan from Awakening it's like I don't know it's not the same yeah definitely it's where it's like I don't know Morgan from Awakening was basically a Robin but better but the nice thing Corrin has is she can marry kids like other kids to have like insane stats on Kana. yeah that, that, that is the nice thing and that's like that takes planning and that's like way later in the game so normally i don't know so i think middle's fine i think middle's fine where it's like you there where corn is just good through the whole game con is kind of only good if you build towards them and even that takes some resources like that's taking your talent away yeah um, corn but you do get a lot of reward from it and the paralog is great for grinding and it's pretty easy. So that's and, cool. and you're likely always going to play it. So Shigure is a good rally bot. Very good he rally gets, bot. He gets rally resistance, rally speed, and rally defense pretty easily. Um, but unlike Laszlo, he has that accessibility problem. But his paralog is really easy. It's just kill boss. So Yeah, the the nice thing about uh Shigure as a unit is that if you really want you can pass down um well actually no you you don't need to do this what am i saying so he naturally gets sky knight right yeah and uh you can recruit him after i believe chapter 20 so he'll always get uh, to level 5 immediately, so you can just promote him, instantly get Rally Speed. Uh, if you make him... Or if you make Azura marry someone for a Rally that he can't naturally get, say, so for Rally, for rally Defense, you would have to marry... Or she would have to marry, um... Jacob, Jacob? I think? Yeah, yeah. Jacob. so Jacob could get rally resistance easily so uh shigure would never have to go into troubadour even though he already has it uh and then he would be able to go into wyvern lord immediately get rally defense and then he can get like marriage with another gen 2 unit get another rally um like say if he marries valoria he'll be able to get rally strength yes um I, I don't know who he friends with, but that, that is four rallies right there, and that is really good for him. Yeah, I think his biggest thing is easy access to rally speed, especially like chapter 18 onward, kind of what I was saying with Charlotte, where rally strength is very important there, and you can get rally speed from him too. And then like chapter 23, you can get rally man. But between them, like chapter 18, to chapter 23 is when those rallies matter a lot and i think him getting that is so helpful he also has staff so just like healing is pretty nice voice of peace can also be kind of cool and helpful um 
I don't know. Yeah, he basically, I just see him as a worse Laszlo, but the fact he gets rally speed much easier is helpful. Um, I, I, I would say he's a better Laszlo, honestly, because like, even though he doesn't have access, like natural access to rally skill, um, without like, you know, it getting passed down to him. Um, I think he has an easier time rally botting, and I think he gives more important rallies easy. Because rally speed is a big one solely for the fact that in an end game, you probably aren't gonna meet the like 35 speed threshold without a rally of some kind, or without like super speed stacking. And that rally is just a you know are the best way to do that. And the fact that Sugar A is able to provide this with absolutely zero investment is, I think, makes him better. And it's on a flyer, so and it's like Rally Man, he can go like much farther with it. Yeah, definitely. And he gives like some staff support, which is cool. So he's a good utility unit. Like the rally speed is really helpful. All right, Siegbert, worst paralog in the game. This paralog sucks. I like it. I hate it. I don't like playing this paralog. Fun. So annoying, and you can't even like experience grind it because of void curse. But like Siegbert's solid, but he's a good backpack because of his ability. I don't know. Like, I, I can see someone just skipping Siegbert's and just using Xander. They're like, why would I do all this effort when I can just pair Charlotte with Xander and do basically the same thing? Yeah, so I, I've used uh, the only Siegbert that I've used before is an Effie Xander. An Effie Xander? No, an Effie Siegbert. And I had Effie pass down draw to him, and honestly, he was solid. I think he's a really good backpack, he's a really good dual striker. Um, yeah. He joins late, so you will have very nice weapon ranks, and you'll have time for your, you know, your Gen 1 units to be able to get skills to pass it down to Siegber, Um before... You start thinking about like okay i need to do this paralog now and i don't, I don't know he, yeah. he definitely is way worse than xander but i think he holds a lot of value in the fact that he he still gets wyvern lord he still does like the same general things as xander but he has even better opportunities to get classes and skills because he's a yeah. gen 2 like, you can pass down Axe Fair from Charlotte to him, which is pretty nice, especially because he wants to go into Wyvern Lord, and then he can just also be a good backpack and dual striker, like you said. Like, he's a good combat unit, but it's just a matter of, like, why do that when there's less investment with Xander? But, I don't know, his personal makes him just broken backpacks, especially if you put him in, like, Berserker or something. Yeah, I, I mean... Yeah, I, I would personally put him better than, uh, probably better than Charlotte. Yeah. Okay, so here's the thing, like, units that are good throughout the game but needs investment or utility, the investment is doing his paralog. <laughs> he doesn't need that much investment about, like, outside of the paralog. That's true. That's true. And honestly, he's... Doing the paralog is a headache. It's he's so fine in his paralog. No, you literally have to rescue him. It, it's probably just a me thing. I'm very bad at that paralog. I just don't like it. Just, uh, I can see why other people don't like this paralog. We put the it's also ninja. activate all dragon veins as well. Ugh. Too much. <laughs> I guess. Anyway, Seagbert's good, but find a way to cheese his paralog with like a Nosferatu tank. That's what I did. I was like, oh, Ophelia? Okay. Let me just go through this. Nos tank so Ophelia. Forest... That's a... I guess that oh, works. Oh, what are you saying? Anyways. <laughs> All right, Forest. Um, so there's two good things. Forest is a good like late game staff user, but even better, Gazak is a great um, capturable. Mm, He's insane. Yeah. He's insane. But doing this paralog kind of sucks though. It's not as bad, but it's still kind of annoying because it's a lot of enemies in like a tight space that you have to deal with. And it's sorcerers and generals. 
I, uh, I want to do this late game. Yeah, I think it's fi fine because you get, I mean, you're forced to bring Leo, and assuming you've used them like adequately, then he, he can eat uh, like the left side of the map pretty easily. Um, the nice thing about Forest is that I, I think this can also apply to Dwyer, but. What, what's what's nice about Forrest is that he's able to get access to um, Butler naturally, which you should mod to make it a maid, uh, by the way, just saying. And you can also... <sighs> you can get him, like, Wyvern Lord from, like, say, Baruka or something. Because, um, like, we were talking earlier that Leo might want Baruka pair up. Uh... If you put him in Malignite, he'd be really a really good like bolt axe user, a really good uh, tome user. Um, I've personally done a Falcon Knight Forest with Azura's Marriage, and that's that was really good. However, um, it might not be as good since you don't get access to the Bolt Naginata, but still a really nice like flying healer. Um. I would say, yeah, over, overall, just, like, a solid utility unit. Yeah, for sure. Although his personal doesn't really work with what he wants to do. Like, yeah. Like, does any damage to a male unit during, if it attacks him? It's, like, like it's, it's, like, better Charlotte ability. Uh, way better Char Charlotte ability. <laughs> um, because yeah. there's a lot more male enemies, but the thing is, uh, actually, let me, let me check his, like, natural bolt. I don't think it- I've never enemy phased with Forrest, ever, unless it was like a mage or something. Uh, like, let's see. He's- he does- he- he's in the back of All right, the uh, army. He doesn't want to take hits. It's a- it's a bit of a disaster. 25 defense and 70 resistance in Troubadour. Actually, let me- let me check in Malig. Um, because that might help a lot. In, in Malignite, it's 35%. Yeah, that- that helps a little bit, but- um, yeah, overall, you probably don't want him fighting physical units. He's much like, much like Elise, really. Um, yeah, he's a lot like Elise, but I don't know. But he also, he does get some decent abilities as well, with the fact that he can get Heartseeker from Leo, he gets Demoiselle and Jontium, and it's just, he's a really great support unit, and Inspiration, like, he just wants to go to Troubadour. Another nice thing is he doesn't really care what his mother is. Like, as long as it's not like Charlotte or something or something like really weird, he can just take the mothers that nobody else wants and do the same thing, just be a late game staff bot. But Gazak is also very important. So good, such a good capturable. Yeah, definitely. So, but Forest, definitely like utility tier. Um, I would say hmm. probably next to Azana because they come around the same time, and they want to do around the same thing. Except rallies, it's more for like using. Well, I don't know if 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 you're using uh if you're using Leo adequately, I think Forest comes like a lot earlier, which is really nice. You can get him like. <sighs> part, part of oh, me you're wants, right. Yeah, yeah, part of part of because Leo joins in chapter fourteen, and especially if he. Oh no no never mind his fast supports are both males never mind <laughs> okay. That's a, I think this is good both um, utility yeah I, I I would say this is good both are very but at the same time you don't want to do forest parallel too early if you want to get Gaza. Uh, That's true yeah definitely. Yeah you want to wait with his. All right Ignatius um so this is another parallel that's kind of painful if you don't have flyers especially this is a very annoying uh, parallel. I, I'm gonna say I think this is the hardest paralog in the game. The hardest, yeah. You really need at least there's no reinforcements or not too many. It's just you need flyers on this level to get to him quickly, and flyers don't come until like the, chapter 19 uh, when you need a lot of them. The problem with Ignatius's paralog is that he starts unpromoted. So if you let the enemies promote, the master ninjas that are next to like. Next to him at the like that reach him on like turn three. Um, they will double him, they will crit him, they will kill and him. They will kill him. 
The thing, like, it, it basically requires you, it doesn't actually require you, but it might as well require you to pass down Wary Fighter from Benny. But, that being said, I think Ignatius is the best Wary Fighter user in the game. Even then, like, with a good mother, like, with Perry and certain other mothers, he can actually have good speed. Yeah, he can have which is really decent funny, speed. But... Um, like if you if you pair Benny with Azura, you can get some pretty, like really good speed on Ignatius. You can put him in Sky Knight, which will get him Darting Blow, and uh, <laughs> that that's it's, it'd be really nice for him. Um, but the nice carries... thing about Ignatius is that he is an even better tank than Benny is. Yeah. For example. Uh, Benny would really struggle in, say, Chapter 25, because while he can tank the ninjas fairly well, he has a lot of defense, so uh, Inevitable End isn't as much of a problem for him. The issue comes from he will not be able to counterattack sufficiently. Ignatius has... Um, you know, I guess it depends on the mother, but Ignatius will probably have a lot more strength than Benny does, which means if you put uh, Ignatius in, like, the left side of Chapter 25, he will be able to uh, survive a lunge chain with the ninjas, and he will probably be able to weaken the Master Ninjas enough where the rest of your units are able to clean up for him and um yeah overall like he he is less accessible than benny but i think overall he is just a better tank yeah benny can also be fast to double and kill i'm like benny he's definitely a better benny like personally i like pairing him with perry um perry's a good mother uh, it's just his paralog sucks so it i feel like he's here but I feel like as a combat unit, he's like here, but then his paralog like brings him down here where you're kind of, you wish you could do it early, but you kind of want to wait till you get more flyers to do it to make it easier. I don't know. It's such an awkward paralog to do. Uh, I think it's he's an awkward place on the map. I think he's at least better than Gunther. At least better than Gunther. Yeah. And his personal also makes it to where, like you said, he's a better tank for sure. Yeah. So I think he's good. Also, he gets shelter utility from like parry and stuff, and he he basically like how I see him is he takes all the chapters that Benny is good on, but can carry himself better through the late game, which is important. Yeah, like basically like once Benny starts falling off, you can bench him in favor of like this, which is really nice. Yeah, it's just the investment similar to Siebert is doing his paralogue. It's so painful. It is very hard. All right, Valoria. Um, I think she's. I've one used of the this character. Right? I've used this character on like chapter eighteen and swept through it, similar to Keaton, and like the beast weakness is nice. But I don't know. I haven't used Valoria too much. I heard she's really good. The thing with Valoria is that she is probably the best stat ball in the game. And what I mean by stat ball is that. Pretty much every stat except magic and resistance are insane for her. She will likely like. Okay, so I I'm a big fan of Mozu Keaton. Yeah, I've done Mozu and Keaton. That is a fun build. <laughs> so the thing about that is Mozu can pass down Quick Draw on player phase. That's an extra four damage, and then uh, I forget what it's called. Um, odd shaped. That's a plus four damage on odd numbered turns. So that's an already eight damage stack. And then she has Berserker access naturally, which is a plus five damage if you get her Axe Fair. Um, let's see, she has uh, better odds, which is, uh, I believe it heals 40% on uh, odd numbered turns. It she has uh, soul access, and she has really high skill, so she'll probably proc that a lot. She gets HP plus five, and on top of everything, she gets beast bane. So she gets yep. natural beast effectiveness. She is one of the most insane characters in this game. 
I would almost say game defining if it weren't for the fact that she has the same problem as Keaton, where she struggles to fight things at two range. But that's true. If you she... if you just keep her away from fighting two range enemies, I think she's one of the best characters in the game. I would put her better than Silas. I can see that. As for her parallel, her parallel is kind of awkward to do. Um, it's not as bad as some other ones, but it's really weird to do. Like, there's just ballistas with mages, and then there's some faceless... It's some scary enemies in a tight space, which is annoying. Um, but yeah, I, I can see it. It basically, like, take Keaton, but Keaton doesn't have access to the best classes to abuse his strengths. But Valoria can do that with the right mother. Like, I've done Mozu... Um, I used her on, like, chapter 18 to deal with, um... Oh, yeah. Horse. I, I almost forgot to mention. Um, with Mozu, life and death. Oh, yeah, life and death um, Which is an extra... Advantage. An extra 10 damage stack, and she doesn't even really get punished with the, the damage... Like, the damage taken. Because she has so much healing, so much natural healing, especially with her personal skill. She'll just never die. Like, so she's basically like a Rev Baruka, but in Conquest. Basically, yeah, she, she just, yeah, you can't die. Yeah, it's just the two range can be a problem, but there's definitely chapters where she's very useful. It's, Paralog's kind of awkward, though, but it's not terrible. Hmm. All right, Percy. So I think Percy has one of the most rewarding Paralogs, for sure. Money's very tight in Conquest. Uh, I wouldn't say so. For me, it is sometimes. Okay. But there are points in Conquest where, like, money is an issue. But, like, guess, the yeah. money you get from Percy's is so nice. But it is kind of a hard paralog. Yeah, I, I I forget what the maximum amount of gold is. It might be, like, oh, God. I'm not going to try to guess. I know it's going to be wrong, but it's a lot of money. It's uh, a lot of money. The paralog's kind of difficult. You need a Nosferatu tank to get through it. But it's very rewarding. And Percy's also a solid unit in general. Like, I do Arthur Effie is really easy. And then I do his paralog after chapter 14, which funds just got low for me because I spent all the money on the tier 2 shops. And you can do it there and get a bunch of money. But yeah, he can get quick draw from Effie. His personal is actually really nice because once you hit chapter 16, you run into some berserkers that can crit you and Percy's like, no. And then there's some other spots in the game where crits can be scary and reducing enemies crit can be pretty nice in some spots. It doesn't sound great and for a lot of the game it's not, but there are certainly spots where that personal is really nice. Yeah. Um... What, what I like most about Percy is that he's one of the few characters in this game that start from a class that is different from uh, his parent. So he gets uh, like he gets natural access to Wyvern Lord. He's the only male uh, that gets like immediate access to Wyvern Lord without any like seals. Um, yep. So it, it, it's really nice to. To be able to like you can really do anything you want with arthur um the only thing that you want for like his marriage for the sake of percy is strength. i think his strength is percy. yeah strength is an issue one That's of you have to get on like effie or charlotte or something yeah strength is definitely one of his like bigger flaws and in fact let me look at what his personal strength is because i know it's not yeah, it's only 45%, but if you, like, pair him with Effie, who has a fast support with uh, Arthur, that goes up to 60%, which is very good. <laughs> it's an yeah, extra, Effie, like... And then he just gets quick draw from her, which is nice. So Effie's definitely, like, one of the mothers of choice for him. Yeah, you, you don't even really need to give him, like, quick draw, because you can... I... I... Without any reclassing, I feel like uh, Effie passing down like natural cover or defense plus two was also very solid for him. Um, because then he can just tank things 
very, very well. Yeah, and having a tanky wyvern for like after chapter 15 is so good for him. It's so good on like 17, 19, and so on, and then flying just really helps. So I'd say he's good. Is there any flaws that he has? It's just strength. Uh, he's, he's solid. His speed could be better, I guess, but... But speed's like... Is it like Ignatius low, where you it just takes too many resources to do much about it? No, his natural speed growth is like 50%. It's really... It's fine. It's just cheeky because i mean that's workable you just give him like a good backpack but he's a child unit so it's harder to like get good backpacks yeah but you have inspiring song tonics and like rally speed that you get yeah and the nice the nice thing about percy is that um he gets berserker from arthur and that gives him axe fair and axe fair very, very good for his damage stacking. <laughs> he can also get Trample from a Lake Knight. You can also get Trample. Um, if you really want, you can put Arthur in uh, Cavalier to pass down Elbow Room to Prissy, which honestly doesn't sound that bad, but it would kind of kill Arthur. Not that that matters too much. Yeah, there's um, ways to fix up his speed and strength, and he's bulky too, so... I'd say he's pretty good. He has a rewarding paralog. It's kind of difficult, but I mean, you have Odin um, at that point, and yeah, yeah. I, I would, right. I would personally put him. I, I, I guess that spot is fine, but I would, I would personally put him in between Laszlo and Selena. Laszlo and Selena. I think he kind of does have the same issue where he needs like certain classes and skills just to reach his fullest potential. But the reason I put him here was because, like, the extra money is really nice. The extra money is a very good perk. <laughs> I think that's, like, a big difference between these two. Just getting that money for halfway through the game is helpful. Um, Ophelia, no question. <laughs> okay, so... This is the best child unit in the game. I do have a little bit to say about this. Okay, go ahead. Um, first. So, first of all, without any like real skill boosting stats her skill is uh bad it's not good but she gets heart seeker she does get heart seeker and she does she is able to get vantage really easily like natural class uh, access to vantage is nice however i think people overlooked the fact that getting a life and death sorcerer takes a lot of effort it does. And it's not like some low investment thing. You, you just kind of brush off. Like, unless you are actually feeding every kill to Ophelia, you are probably getting her to life and death at chapter 23. And at that point, she can only really like sweep a few maps, um, which to be fair is very, very strong. But I think what makes her really good is the fact that with, uh, I believe, Nyx and Elise, her magic cap is 41 in Sorcerer. So she, and she is a very fast unit. So even without reclassing, she is a very, very strong player phase unit. Um, I would argue, yeah, definitely better than Leo. The problem is she can't enemy phase without vantage. And it's true. I think I think that's her biggest downfall cuz she has no no bulk at all. That's true, but also the fact that she, her paralogs the most important one in the game. Like you get the best rewards, you get calamity gate, another copy of lightning which is very helpful in chapter 21. You also get a spirit dust, and wait, what else do you get? You get calamity gate, lightning, spirit dust, and horse spirit. Horse spirit. Horse spirit's very helpful for mages like Leo, and calamity gate basically eliminates all of her bad matchups and any other mage in this game, which is so insane. Yeah. And... Um. But it is kind of a hard paralog. I'm not gonna lie. It's 
De no matter when you play, it's going to be a little difficult. It's <laughs> definitely a weird map to play. I don't like, think the it's rewards are too so bad. bad. The the rewards are definitely like if you're not going to use Ophelia, you absolutely would it, it, it's always good to d at least do the paralog because Yeah, the paralog is good. Do getting, it early. Just getting the <laughs> calamity gate alone is just so insane because the thing with dual weapons because this this also applies to the dual club um is that it doubles the weapon triangle effect. So, yeah. like, it not only reverses it, it makes it even better. Uh, which is just... <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's broken! broken. <laughs> it's so broken! Um, Mages and wyverns in this game are just so good. Yeah, it, it's really, really insane how good they are. Um, and it... And it Really, solely because of the dual weapons, you can you can make any axe or tome user at least solid. And I think the fact that you access that through Ophelia is like it does give her a lot of value. Um, but as a unit, I definitely think that people overvalue her. Well. There was she's a really easy answer to like the end game and last few chapters of Conquest. She is sure. an easy answer to Okay, she's so She's like easy she's a really easy answer. If you're if well you're willing chapters. to if you're willing to reset for it, she is a Takami killer without investment. Like a Okay, so at least Ophelia with capped magic um without any reclassing at all she can kill Takami with vengeance. Uh, Another thing was, remember that challenge I told you where the guy didn't promote units? Yes. What he did was he'd use her personal Mjolnir to, like, get through endgame with no promoted units. And I was like, what? We, oh my god. I don't know. I think that that's a good... If you could not promote her and she gets through endgame, that's... Yeah, Mjolnir, I don't know. That's, that's um, something else. Yeah, that is, that is another thing, like... She's a really good crit stacker. Um, can get like a plus two Mjolnir and then just like put three tomes in her inventory and then she will crit everything. Yep. And also the accuracy problem, Yago drops, drops Excalibur, which she can use. So that that's really true. helpful. Excalibur is very nice. So she's the bottom of game defining. But, I mean, if there was, like, a gap between these two, I would put her there, but that's doing too much. She's not higher than Niles, but I think, in terms of, like, pure child unit, she's probably the best. I don't know. She's a really easy answer to all the hard maps in Conquest. Like, even Siegbert's, I was like, oh, I don't want to play this, so I'll just send Ophelia with Vantage and a good pair up and win. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I can. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with that. I wouldn't put her any higher. Like, these units just, they change how you look at the game completely. Yeah, really. But her her paralog's so good. She's just a good unit. All right. So Soleil, I think Soleil is easily here. So Soleil um, is probably, well, somewhere in this tier. I'm just going to put her. I, I think Soleil is better than Kaze, definitely. Kaze. She's probably the best Soul Master Ninja in the game. I think she's just the best master ninja in the game uh the yeah. fact that she's all right she's she already gets the perks of being a gen 2 unit right yep um the thing with her is that she's she gets natural access to soul she gets natural access to bonite she gets natural access to master ninja um and then on top of that she can alter her growths depending on her mother and you can make her growths fit better for a master ninja and i think that's one of the most broken thing um about her because yep. say okay so like what i like doing is azura soleil and what is really good about that is um azura can pass down voice of peace to Soleil, which basically gives her, like, two defense. And, uh, 
On top of that, it gives her access to Dragon Veins. So, not only can she just soul her way through the entire map, but she can also use Dragon Veins, so she doesn't even really need help from anyone like Corrin. She can just do everything. <laughs> like, um, for, for example, Siegbert's Paralog, right? The entire right side is hers. Just straight up. Um, it's the, the right side is Omiyoji's and Dark Knights and Sorcerers. And there's like a couple archers, but or a couple snipers, but they're not that much of a problem since you have soul. And um, you will just kill him. <laughs> like, like it's, it's super easy to just send Master Ninja Soleil into the center of everything and then win yep she's also a really easy answer to chapter 25 because she can get sure it can break her really easily and also even on like chapter 24 like we keep saying master ninja with the hunter's knife is dumb and it really is it's so good on like late game conquests and she just does it the yeah, best it actually because her personal abilities <laughs> Yeah, she can just solo 24 with soul. Uh, she's basically like a Nosferatu tank as a... And, and the nice thing a, about her, too, is that since she is... Uh, you, you can get her before chapter 19 really easily, and since she has natural access to soul ninja, um, what you can do is, like, you can pass down soul with Lazo, immediately put her into master ninja, and then you have a soul ninja just for chapter 19. You just solo. Yeah, um, and her personal abilities just helps her do that even better. Like paired with the female unit, she does plus two damage dealt and take minus two taken, which is super good. She's super fast. Also, Soleil with a brave sword just kills everything on player phase. Really good. It's kind of dumb. And I don't know, her paralog's not too bad either. It's basically like chapter 10, but different. It, I don't know, you place the blocks. It's like Reva. Which chapter of Rev is it where you place the blocks at 13? Yeah, 13. Yeah, chapter 13. It's basically like chapter 10 from Conquest and chapter 13 like mixed together. So it's not too bad. It's a fun paralog. Um, I would recommend doing it early because doing it later and fighting like sorcerers and bow knights and stuff, just it's not fun. I think it's fun to do but, late. You think so? I don't know. I'd rather do it early. That's I mean, too hard. if you're using Kaze, he can just shut down the entire like top top left. So um, that's fun. Yeah, it's not bad. And also, Camilla like kind of wipes the bottom right side with the dual club in that chapter. Yeah, and, so... and like you have Xander who can do circles. Oh, <laughs> Xander just. <laughs> oh, Xander! Xander will break any part of the map if you want him to. But yeah, Soleil is really good. Paralog's not too bad. It's actually pretty fun. And yeah, overall, Master Ninja, best Master Ninja in the game. So Nina, so Nina's a character I have a lot of experience with. So I think Nina's a good player phase unit. It reminds me of Mozu, where great speed, um, but I don't know. She can sometimes struggle to kill stuff. Um... But there's another build you can use where you pair Nyx with Niles, and she can easily get, like, Rally Magic and Rally Skill, which is great for later on mages, so... Yeah, I think... I think... As a combat unit, I think she's definitely better than Niles. The... I mean, she obviously loses the insane utility, but, um... She could still be a solid utility unit. I think she would... I, I would probably put her, like, better than Effie, um, because she is really strong with bows, just like Effie is, except she's on the more magical side, and I feel like that's better, because the Shining Bow gets 1-2 range, and the fact that she just, like, her best weapon is a 1-2 range, like, I think 14 might bow, it's crazy. Uh, how good she can get. She can just, like... She can't solo maps, because, um, no, obviously... No, she's way too frail. She's, she's, she's very soloing frail. any maps. But, like, say in, in chapter in chapter 24, right, she's she's really, really good in there, because, you know, even even if she's in a situation where she does have to enemy phase, like, one or two units, she can enemy phase the, uh, 
hold Naginata Falco Knights really easily, and you know, they can't even do anything because they can't attack from one range. She's using the Shining Bow. Yeah. I think one thing that's kind of awkward is Nita really, really would want, like, Sniper. Kenshi Knight would be really helpful on her to wield bows and flying, but she doesn't get that, like, super easily because she has to fight other people who want Mozu as a mother. And Well, she can't even get Sniper through Mozu. The only way for Nita to get Sniper is... Uh, oh, like Korin. Is Korin, or Kana. Well, Korin and Kana, to rather. Korin and Kana. Um, like, she really wants that because I feel like she really needs, like, Quick Draw and maybe Bowfair to, like, really kill sometimes. But she's really fast, and being fast... If you can double, all you need is like a backpack and some support to yeah. kill. And, and not to mention, she, she like even still has the utility of like being naturally a bow knight, which is very yep. good. And bow knight's still pretty good like throughout the game. Uh, Shuriken um, Breaker is nice. And when she gets lock touch, very effective. Oh yeah, lock touch and movement plus one, just like, why not? Her personal, uh, I've never really found it to be useful personally but i guess it can help her kill um yeah it's it, it can help a bit but it's not probably not something that you're gonna find yourself using often unless you're actually like planning to use it or like trying to get use out of it yeah all right so that's all the units i guess we can look back over it like one more time to see if we want to move anything um i yeah. think all the units in bad are bad like yeah, they're they're not good, but these two good backpacks. I think Flora is the worst in the game for sure. Just um, doesn't get anything. My main, my biggest gripe, I guess, would probably be move Jacob a little lower. Probably under Dwyer, maybe under Percy. That's Silas. Oh wait, where'd you say? I said, you say? Oh, yeah, Jacob. <laughs> Oh, Jacob? Oh, yeah. I was, like, looking at him earlier, too, and I was like, that's... Like, he, he's kind of high. He's kind of... He's good, but he's not that good. Um, I still think he has a lot of really good early game utility, but, yeah. He really does, like... Jean Tiam is really good with Effie and Mel Corin, and just... He has better stats than Felicia, so... And Paladin Jacob is solid early on, but he's Jacob right. can basically... He's all right, but Jacob does the job better. I think I think Butler Jacob is unironically better than Paladin Jacob. I can see that. Like daggers are just really good early on. Um. Other than that, um, I think I'm generally happy with this. Uh, the only one I don't know is like Midori. I feel like Midori should go like top of here because I really do think she's the worst child unit. Yeah, I think the the problem with her is that she kind of just subjects herself into being like purely like. I'm not gonna fight anything. I'm just gonna do my thing, and uh, she does so a good job. She does a good job at doing her thing. To be she's fair, she's good on specific chapters for money, and that's really it. Yeah, I don't know Ignatius and Gunter. Um, I think I, I think like what you said is fine. Like the, he yeah. has flying access and stuff, and Ignatius carries him through the late game. It's just Ignatius paralog. I would move him like there because the paralog is. Ugh. Uh, I guess. Um, I, I personally wouldn't really dock too many points based on, like, map the difficulty. Because that's not his fault. Well, it partly You're is. right, but, like, the thing is, if I'm going to replay through Conquest, it's like, uh, do I have to do this, or can I just skip Ignatius? Like, do I really need him? It's I like, guess. the difference between Ignatius and Ophelia... Is like their paralogs are kind of difficult. Well, not as bad as this one, but it's like I get good rewards. Or like Percy's, where it's like I get really good rewards, but it's like all you get is Ignatius and a hard time. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess that's fair. Like that's why, like I really like it's not enough for them to be like, oh, bad paralog, you're bad. But it's definitely enough to like make you consider not doing it. Like same with Seabirds. It's like, do I really want to do this, or can I just skip it, or is the what I get out of it worth it? Yeah, that's that's definitely fair. Sophie, Sophie, I don't know. Is she game? Like, she's really good. Ah, I she's so also Nicole. I forgot to mention, but Nicole is also a decent capture. Hole, um, he's in the Night. he doesn't have good growths, but like he's in a good class. So. I I don't know about 
Sophie, to be honest, because like, I've I've had very limited experience with Sophie, so I haven't really had a lot of chances to like form much of an opinion on her. But she from my experience, stats. she is very solid. Like I, I wouldn't put her in game breaking, but I would put her like in game defining. Because like these characters, like Camilla, early game brokenness and a solid. Xander is the easiest character to use in the game. Corrin's just Corrin. Being a dancer is broken. His basically like personal read adds another dimension to the game, and Ophelia is like the easiest answer to all of the hardest things and conquest for a child unit and has a great paralog so yeah i guess this is fine i wouldn't move her up so like she doesn't really do anything to like change how you think about the game yeah yeah so um yeah yeah i guess that's that's, that's where we're gonna leave things off um these are I, I feel like these are some pretty hot takes. I feel like we might get flagged for some. No, I don't know. This is just how I feel. I wouldn't say there's anything like hot take where I'm like, Perry is my favorite unit, so I'm gonna just put him here. Yeah. Like I didn't really play favorites with a lot of these. I was just like thinking about how conquest is and like what would be good and like what units would be good. Um what don't you want. Yeah, definitely. So um yeah, with that, uh, I guess we'll end things off here. So, um, yeah, thanks for inviting me to do this tier list. Yeah, anytime. All right. Bye, everybody. Have a good day. Peace.